humanities. We're here with Sunlight Blade. Hey! Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. So, thank you for joining us. No, that's fine. Yeah, really. This this feels so bizarre. I have to be honest because I I've been, I told Patrick because I have met him before, but this is you're the only podcast I listen to out, out of any podcast ever. Like not just Souls, but any podcast. And I listen to you all the time, and it's so cool to to have met Patrick and then to be on the podcast like the week after that. <laughs> it's kind of surreal. I remember a while ago when you said that uh, that you were listening to us on some sort of really hot bus that was taking taking its time to get back, and we, we kind of saved your life. And I was like, that's really cool. That makes me smile because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'd had a shitty day at work at that point. And I was like, yeah, that's 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 nice. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so I, I was at college. I've actually left, and I'm going to university in a, in a few weeks or so. But um, well, when I went to college, every day I had an hour-long bus journey there and back, which was it just wasn't fun really, and it was very hot that that particular day. I remember it actually. And then um, I was looking for my phone. I was like, I just please something pop out at me, or I will end my life right now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> there I found your podcast. I had I was listening to you before that, but um, I'd forgotten about it just for a second. But then I found it, and I was like, oh, got something to listen to. Perfect. It put me in mind of there was, there was a time when uh, it was the worst bus journey I'd ever had where I was on a hot bus and for some reason they got the heating on still and it was one of those where the only way to escape was to uh, to disappear into my iPod and fall asleep and I ended up smacking my head against the window <laughs> when it went over a bump and then realised that there was someone sitting next to me who was basically one of their arse cheeks fitted <laughs> on the human space next to me but was seemingly trying to push me out of the side of the bus <laughs> yeah. as if I'd somehow fucking kitty pride through the side of it um, <laughs> and I took my headphones off and was just like what's going on no it's sleepy sickness and they went oh. and I was no <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, oh. so they cherried the moment with some sort of arse malteser so <laughs> thanks for that maybe he but, was trying to absorb you yeah, let's move into Souls! Yeah. So we're so, all here for Dark Souls, don't we? Because we all like that, right? Yeah, it's pretty we good. do. Yeah, pretty good. good. Uh, so how did you get into Dark Souls, Mr. Bleed? Um, oh, that, oh, wasn't expecting that question, actually. Um, I, I, actually, uh, interestingly, I played... No, no, I saw Demon Souls in a shop one day, saw the cover, looked at it, and thought it looked really interesting, realised I didn't have a PS3, and went, right, well, that was a nice idea anyway waited a few years and then dark souls came out and i it actually did take me a while and about i came into dark souls about a year late which most people don't realize but i was actually fairly late to the dark souls scene so uh yeah one day i just came across it online i think it was and i thought oh souls that's that's familiar and then i remember demon souls and i thought that concept uh, sounded interesting and I got Dark Souls uh, just basically because the concept that hooked me was the fact that other players could invade your game and, like, interact with your your single-player story, you know, playthrough, which mm -hmm. I'd, I'd never heard of that before. That was I thought that was really unique, and that's, frankly, the only reason why I got the game, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it was considered hard, and the cover art looked quite cool, so... Yeah. <laughs> so did you did you remember the, the impression that Demon Souls had had, and, and what... Um... Was that was that based upon the American release, or generally kind of a build-up among, amongst fandom that, that he was this kind of hardcore game, or was it? I you know I didn't even look at any reviews, or I didn't really know anything about it. It was literally just I saw the box cover in a in a I think it was GameStop or whatever that game store that has closed down. I don't know what it was, but anyway, Game Station I, was it? Was it Game Station? Yeah, 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 because it's not here anymore, but. Um... Yeah, I looked. I looked at the cover of Demon Souls. It looked. It was appealing cover art. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. And I looked at the back and just read the back and thought that looks pretty cool. And then I realised it was for a, a PlayStation only, and I didn't have one at that point. I mm -hmm. still don't have one, in fact. So uh, yeah, that was pretty much it, really. But it's it's funny with regards to that um, the invading mechanic because obviously Watch Dogs has taken it on now, and there's a uh, Destiny seems to have kind of a variation of the, the people coming mm. into your game for big bits, but. When Dan Ma was on the show, Dan was saying that he saw Demon Souls when From were trying to pitch it and were really struggling to kind of get across the intricacies or as to exactly how it would work. And yet here you've got something which is 
in sort of, you know, we can consider ourselves within quite niche games now, but is going to be one of the biggest influences on, you know, the PS4 and Xbox One generations. Mm. Mm. I mean, I've lost track of the amount of times you read an article that says, oh yeah, we, we're doing this bit that's a bit like Dark Souls. And oh, it's, yeah. it's good to see, it's good to see. But it's also like, hmm, do you just know that I'm interested in that? that like, <laughs> I'm not going to buy your game just because you say it's like Dark Souls. Show me why it's like Dark Souls. Don't well, just say it's like Dark Souls. Yeah, yeah, well, interestingly, uh, I saw Watch Dogs, like, advertising campaigns everywhere, and actually they were they were trying to push, like, that online interac- seamless interaction as something new in some cases. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> That's been around for ages. I think Payday 2 did something similar as well. I was reading an article about Payday 2, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's a bit like Dark Souls, and then explained it. It's like, that is nothing like it. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I, I know um, Patrick and I were, were talking on uh, on Twitter at a certain point, and somebody said, um, oh, uh, I've got the app. Can I invade your game? And it's like, well... I thought you didn't like Dark Souls. And they were like, oh, no, I thought you were talking about Watch Dogs. Ooh, so it's, yeah. it's interesting that, you know, even even within those folks that didn't like the series or weren't interested in the series, they seem to think automatically we were talking about Watch Dogs, which might be down to advertising campaigns or mm. what, yeah. what, I don't know. Being the hot thing at the time. So how once you got your, your hands on uh, Dark Souls, how did how did you sit with it? Did it did it make a, an instant impression, or was it something that? Because uh, a, a number of people um, who got into the game were saying that they they stood back from it at first and just thinking it wasn't for them, and then launched back into it. Yeah, I've always I've always tried to remember, but I I'm, unfortunately am cursed with a terrible memory. But I, <laughs> I I can't. I think I just I think I played it, and then the problem was I was telling Patrick before was that I used a guide for the whole of my first playthrough, right. which looking back, I very, very, very much regret. Mm-hmm. And I think you should definitely not do that. If you, if you haven't played the Souls games, I really think you shouldn't do that. And um, the thing was, because I, I saw so many online forums and read about them so much about the cooler things later on in the game that I just wanted to just experience everything and make sure that I didn't miss anything, which is why mm-hmm. I used the guide, which now I still don't think I should have done, but that was my reasoning at the time. Uh, just so that I could collect everything and get everything. So, although I still, I think I, I must have found it hard because it's, it's first playthrough is challenging no matter what. But mm. I did possibly not as much as other people simply because I did uh, use a guide. Mm-hmm. I think maybe the the guides do help you with like you know go here, go here, go here. But I think I don't think the guide can help you that much with. I mean, I don't know if it did or not, but with the actual mechanical, you know, getting, yeah, that's getting good point. as it were. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what I did with that, actually. I mean, um, there's always people saying, like, what strategies you can you can use for this boss, blah, 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 and, like, what are the best items to get through this level in terms of, you know, if a, if a level involves fire, use this fire-resistant thing. I don't know. But, um, yeah, you do have a point there, I guess. Mm. I just I like guess... to think of, like, the, the, the combat strategies as just a big two-page spread with just, look at your stamina bar, you fool! <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the help you need. Yeah, but I think even within that, that... Um... When the reason that YouTube and the community, I think, is, is as vibrant as it is, that it's because everybody makes different decisions within the game. And, you know, you could, you could, you could follow a guide or you could get hints from, from say, a, an Epic Name Bro video or, or whichever you choose. But sometimes your instincts are to go down another path and what they're doing might not suit your play style. And those little revelations and how you bounce those back and forth across across with people that you um that you're speaking with about the game that's that's what makes it interesting i think that's what makes the fan base such a, a tight bunch because there's no right answer a lot of the time mm. and it's the, the, the variety of ways you can approach a problem you know and uh, which leads us on quite nicely to youtube <laughs> doesn't it really mm. um uh, for those, so for those of you listening, because we didn't do this properly, did we? Uh, we're bad <laughs> at intros, aren't we? Um, for those of you listening who may not be familiar with Sunlight Blade, uh, he runs a YouTube channel uh, called Sunlight Blade, uh, <laughs> and he puts together some of the absolute best top tens I've ever watched. Oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Uh, and they're top tens. They're mainly PvP top tens, um, usually with a theme. Uh, so yeah. top ten gank spanks and top ten snelth attacks and. Other ones that I can't immediately bring to mind, but there's lots. Um, and, you know, you, I find you often showcase uh, in your top ten 
so many different builds and so many like you look at things. What the hell are they using? Because <laughs> it's that, for me, yeah. it's it's a learning thing. Like I watch it going, I've never seen that weapon. What is that? Ooh, I well, like I'm, that. <laughs> I'm going to tie this back into uh, Dark Souls Two and say, when did PvP sort of click for you? And when did you? How did you start exploring it? Were you good at first? Were you fascinated by it? And how did that then? Um, you know, how did the fascination build up to, to starting your own channel, I guess? Oh, is this directed at me, sorry? We... Yes, yes. Mm. All right, okay, Dark Souls 2. Um, yeah, so uh, I found in Dark Souls 1, is I actually started my top 10 series for Dark Souls 1. And, sorry, you know, I went... did mean Dark Souls 1. I, I do apologise. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I, okay, my first videos were appalling, as most people who start YouTube uh, find. <laughs> uh, like, I started out with, I think it was... Um, a video with the most horrendously long title ever. It was something like determining the effectiveness of a vitality build or something stupid like that. But I basically found a build that I thought no one had made before, which was uh, not true. It just had 99 vitality, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and I um, sort of presented it as being something new and said I would, uh, you know, try I did a 20 minute video of sort of a showcase, a build showcase thing. And basically, I got a thousand views uh, yeah. on my very first video, and I was like, that, "How is that even possible? That's amazing!" Mm. And then I started. Um, so I thought, "Hmm, there's a YouTube community here." And then I started like uh, uh, sort of researching the other YouTubers and seeing what other people were making videos for Dark Souls. And you know, I got to speak to a few of them, and it just built up from there, making videos with them. And basically, one day I decided um, to make a top ten video, which. I, I was influenced in making by a variety of different places, but that is where my channel started, to be honest. That's where things mm. actually kicked off and the snowball started rolling. So, and, and yeah, things just really blew up from there. And so I decided to carry on my top 10 series into Dark Souls 2 because I thought, yeah, obviously, if it's going well in Dark Souls yeah, 1, yeah, it'll yeah. probably go well in Dark Souls 2, and it mm. did. So, yeah, just... Here we are. <laughs> so how did you get those those initial top tens? Because obviously, after a certain time, people were sending them to you because you were putting out the call from the, the videos. But you did you see footage yeah. first and then approach people for those? or? Well, at that time, I think the way I'd entered YouTube helped me out a lot in that I made friends very quickly and reached out a, a lot to other YouTubers at that time. So I knew a lot of them personally. Mm -hmm. And... The, I sort of did a mixture. I put out a video asking people, saying people that I was starting this new series and they could send me submissions. So I did it that way. And I also uh, went to other uploaders that I knew and said, you have a capture card, you play Dark Souls. Could you, you know, p uh, record yourself doing a clip for whatever my first top 10 was? I think it was top mm -hmm. 10 strength kills or something like that. So I just said, yeah, can you help me out by starting off my series and send me a submission? And... Uh, yeah, they, a lot of them did, so that made up the majority of my first top 10 was all YouTubers, but yeah, just started from there, really. It's cool that a community can rally around you so quickly. Yeah, yeah, this uh, the Dark Souls community, uh, I mean, it depends how you define it, really, but there's definitely some amazing people in, in, within the community, definitely. Mm -hmm. So with those with those uh, folks, have there, has there ever been any kind of feedback as to them not getting higher up in the uh, in the top 10 or are all pretty gracious about it? <laughs> oh, like where they come ranking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think it was mostly tongue-in-cheek. I know, I don't know if you know about Yukas Legion and Ouroboros of the Ninja. Yeah, I've seen Yuka, mm -hmm. some of Yukas' uh, um, Twitch stuff, but um, okay. I haven't really seen much of Ouroboros. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's always... Okay, in terms of YouTubers, like, fighting over it, I mean, not really. It was mostly... Mm -hmm. I know them too, like... Um, one of them got ranked at just one spot higher than the other, and they apparently they you know were like having a go at each other or something. <laughs> but I, I don't know if that's true. But um, yeah, I definitely. I mean, I definitely have like each top ten I upload. I'd say the first twenty or so dislikes are people who you know didn't get their video featured in a or didn't rank where they wanted to. But yeah, I mean, apart from that, it's, yeah. <laughs> There'll be a number of times that I'll be still watching. Still in the and... video, you twat! Come on. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, there's a number of times that I'll be watching and I'll see something really cool about number eight or something and I'll go, yeah, it's not going to get bettered. And then there'll be there'll be something normally around about three where I go, no. <laughs> and then and then sort of it genuinely sort of increases to uh, to the number one. But uh, do you ever have, how much um, debating do you go on with regards to 
the position in the top ten, or is it kind of more or less by instinct? Oh right, okay. So I think I see where you're going now. I didn't quite understand at first. Yeah. So yeah, definitely when I was starting, that actually was a huge problem in that uh, a lot of people complained a lot of the time that my ranking and the way I ranked things was horrendous and that I shouldn't be doing it and things <laughs> like that. I did get there was definitely a lot of that, and in in most cases I agreed. I also I know I had a problem where I tended to place. YouTubers or bigger YouTubers than me higher up. I guess that was just a subconscious slash, you know, respect thing. But I really shouldn't have done that. I definitely don't do that anymore. But I can see where people came from. There, they said, you know, I was just ranking all my friends highly, mm. which, yeah, you know, I, I can see where they're coming from. I think I did uh, do that to an extent. But yeah, I've definitely changed that now. And I, a lot of people have offered to help me judging the clips, but I just find that would be really hard to do that practically, mm. as in. How to show them all the clips? Like I yeah. have to, I don't know. It would be a bit, a bit challenging, and just add even more time on. And it, you know, it's the yeah. longest, it's the longest video I, I make at the moment in terms of effort I put into it. So I don't necessarily want to put, you know, more work on top. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's getting a bit better. I think I've. It, people are always going to have different opinions, you know, like um, on slight things. But I think, I think it hasn't been as much of an issue as it used to, for sure. Mm -hmm. so how many, on an average week, uh, how many rough submissions do you tend to get these days, like, roughly? Um, about 200. For... No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I can understand why you wouldn't want to try and show that to another person over the internet, then. Yeah, oh, no, like, I, I know... They're for I, hours! Yeah, no, I I am there for hours. <laughs> yeah, for More sure. hours! <laughs> yeah. Because I have to watch every single one, and the thing is, people don't send me just a 30-second clip. They send me a 10-minute mm. clip and say, well, find where my clip is. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> or or they, they actually give me the timestamp, but then I still have to, you know, watch to see... It's, I don't know, it's sometimes you need to watch to see if there's any better ones within that clip, or... Mm. Or some people send me multiple clips and just say, I can't choose, can you please pick what you want, which one you oh, think is better. Man. <laughs> yeah, so... There's a lot of things like that which take out. It's just very time consuming. It's fun to do. It's very fun, and I I learn a lot from doing it actually because people do send in the craziest things. But yeah, I, yeah, just takes just, time. Just imagine you sort of getting in from college and saying hello to your mum, and then walking upstairs, going into your room, pressing the secret wall, and then walking <laughs> out like Cerebro in the X Men, and sort of <laughs> putting on the big helmet and then watching all the clips. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, I, I see it like that bit from uh, near the end of Watchmen, where you've got Ozymandias and, and his wall full of screens, and they're all different. <laughs> just sit back, open your eyes, and just go, uh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing as glamorous as that, to be honest. I, I actually do it all, well, I used to do it all from college, now I do it from internet cafes, because uh, I have a monthly data cap at home, so I can't do anything with the internet at home, but um, <laughs> anything big anyway. But yeah... <laughs> So at what point did you did you realise that things were taking off? I mean, a thousand for the for your first view was amazing, but there's what 175,000 on the last one. Oh yeah, the last one that was one I really didn't expect to go up at all. But yeah, for some reason that's taken off. Um, yeah, I mean, after the first initial video, the thousand views, things you know dropped uh, significantly. I don't really know why the first one went off so well, but um, yeah, it's not normal. And I mean, it took about it's a very slow process, as in. I've been doing this for two years, and I'm pretty sure I didn't really see anything massive until after a year. So mm -hmm. it, it definitely takes time. But um, yeah, basically, I'd say from my first top ten video, I mean, really, there's that is when things started kicking off, and people like that's when I heard other YouTubers like even mention me, and that was a really weird feeling. Like up until up until that point, I had a few hundred subscribers. You know, it was just. I was just one face among millions. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, after the top 10 videos, and it was a new, fresh idea and that people were, you know, slowly becoming interested in and seeing it's a new series. No one's done that before for Dark Souls. And, uh, yeah, I actually heard people... I could sit... Like, I, I could come to a forum and see my name mentioned. I was like, what is mm. this? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, that it was the top 10 series that was mm. sort of... Yeah, definitely got the ball rolling. Uh, the ball rolling, yeah. Did that inspire you getting the the new PC then? Because was it was it last Christmas you got a new PC? Um, I got a new laptop. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I well, basically, my old like, yeah, my old laptop was just rubbish, and um, you know, rendering a video just took hours, and it was all it's just it. Was, I mean, it's fine, but 
considering I can't use the internet at home, it just it, the time the time is just building up too much. Mm-hmm. So I bought a new laptop, which was I think it basically has all the specs you need for editing. So mm-hmm. fast renders, you know, it does all the rendering and stuff really, really well. So it's a laptop. I'd say I asked around a lot of different YouTubers what they would recommend and things like that for editing. And that's and I don't even know what it's called to be honest, but <laughs> it's worked really mm-hmm. well. I'm not very like technical kind of thing, but yeah, it's worked really well for what I need to do. So, so what are you saying about like internet and cafes and stuff and the data cap at home? How do you go about getting getting things assembled? Do you do you sort of get everything edited on, and then take it on a memory stick to the internet cafe and then sit there and upload it for like half an hour to an hour or what? Yeah, well, I mean, I went, I, when when I was at college, it was a lot easier because college has yeah. really fast internet, so. I would, yeah, put everything on a memory stick, put my video, or, or for example, when I needed to, to assemble a top 10, I'd go to college, look at, through everyone's submissions, I, you know, I'd just stay on after college, after lessons are finished or something, and just look through everyone's submissions, put them all on a memory stick, you know, the one, the, like, the top 20, say, that I had to choose between, mm-hmm. and then come back home, and sort it out at home, make the video, take it to college, uh, and upload it then, and that's, that's what I always did, but now it's a bit different, because I've left, obviously, so... Mm. Yeah, basically, it involves... Needs be as needs must and all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I just... I usually take... To be honest, I take my laptop to a cafe with... Mm. There's a there's a good cafe near... Well, I, it's like a 20-minute drive. Or maybe, yeah, 20-minute drive. And they have really fast fiber optic internet. So mm. I go there, you know, order coffee, get breakfast or something, and just uh, upload my stuff. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. Because I have a 25, 20 gigabyte data cap at home, which... Really? Uh, me. Yeah, yeah, it's quite... It's, it's, it's pretty what small. About, yeah, what, that's what, one one Facebook page, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're thinking of megabytes there. <laughs> well, I don't know. They're putting apps in stuff these days. They're ruining everything. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. worth noting that why you say you're at college. I mean, like, so you started your channel when you were like 16. Yeah, I think it did. That's actually. meant, do you know what I did when I was 16? I pretty much just played Metal Gear 2. I was wondering where you were going with that, Patrick. <laughs> Do you know what I did during the uh, radio appropriate hours when I was 16? When all this was woods and open fields and we had three colours, black, white and grey. And that was enough. And we feared Hitler. <laughs> we had a ball on a stick and we liked it. Uh, you, mean, you mean Jeremy. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was quite surprised when we met, up in, uh, we, we met outside in Germany to find out how young you were. Because I thought you were way older. Uh, yeah, a lot of people say that, actually, because I have, you know, I have revealed my age a few times in videos and Twitter and things like that, and I, that's always the response I get, which, I mean, yeah, I don't know, people, I mean, some people have definitely said some ridiculous ages, which are, <laughs> like, 50, for example, which, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that's not Hello, flattering. dear, is it time for another top ten? Crack out the Bakewell tarts and put on a cup of tea. Watch songs of praise and here we go, here's a new one from Peeve. <laughs> I've watched that, to be honest. <laughs> You've got to do that as a video now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Old sunlight blade. Top ten granddad style. Yeah. Put on your slippers, here's number nine. <laughs> I'm nearly dead, it's thing. number six. <laughs> So, so um, beyond the uh, the top tens that you've done, where did the ideas come in to uh, to do the likes of the the Mirror Night Summers and uh, and the the Hardcore Survival Guide, which is kicking in at the minute? Just coming in, love that Mirror Night video. Oh yeah, thanks. Um, yeah. I mm, yeah. So I rec- I recently heard about the Mirror Night Invasion mechanic itself, and I thought, oh, that is awesome. Like, because I'd heard in Demon Souls there was something similar, the old Night Boss or something. I'm not really sure. I haven't played it, but yeah, the old monk, old it was, monk. yeah. It was, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So I heard, I heard about it, and I thought that is such an awesome mechanic. And then I checked on on forums if if other people like if this was a really big thing that I hadn't just somehow hadn't heard about. And it, I mean, I saw a few people talking about it and how to do it and things like that, but it wasn't as big as I thought it would be. So I came to the conclusion that not that many people knew about it. So I made a video mm-hmm. um, uh, of me. Invading people, I decided to make add in some challenges, you know, to just make it a bit more interesting to watch. Mm. And yeah, it, a lot of a lot of people didn't know about it, so <laughs> that was really it's amazing. Fun. Considering like that was part of like the first bit of pre-release stuff that they were talking about, going, oh, you can get someone into this boss fight. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, like, but they wouldn't shout about it. How do people not know? Yeah, but I, that was I... when we had nineteen foot mirror night, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, if you, yeah, I got a lot of people messaging me like saying they had no idea about it. So, yeah, I mean, it is a slightly bizarre thing, but um, or maybe not necessarily didn't know about it. Maybe they had a vague idea about it, but they had no idea how you actually did it or yeah. what I the never, specifics I never were. With a, the soapstone, like that changes everything because you can use that forever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can, and I found out that it definitely matters what time you do it at, because I started in the morning up until the evening. I spent the whole day doing it and got about 10 invasions, which was just pathetic. Mm. And then in the evening, uh, I got like, I was getting low, I'm not going to say hundreds, but you know, I was getting a lot of really consistent, uh, like every few minutes or so. So mm. I don't know what happens. It definitely matters what, um, what time of day it is for some reason. Well, that's what I found anyway. So, uh, with regards to the, the hardcore survival guide, what what was it that inspired that? Was it uh, uh, something that that grew in the, in your mind over over a course of uh, of days or weeks? Or how could I do this and and make it different for each area? Or um, it's kind of I've always wanted to do a playthrough, like um, just a playthrough. I actually wanted to do a playthrough of Dark Souls One, mm-hmm. but I, as I said, I actually said I remember saying like a year ago, I just. I just can't think of a way to make it unique from mm-hmm. or do something that people haven't done yet. Because mm-hmm. I thought, if I'm going to do a Let's Play, I, I just want it to be something new. Uh, you know, not a Let's Play, sorry, just a playthrough. I want it to be something new. But uh, it just took me ages to think of a way that I could... Something that I could make fun, but also practical. And, uh, and yeah, I have eventually figured out something for Dark Souls 2. The only thing problem I had with a name was a name, to be honest. I didn't know what to call mm. it, and I'm still not really happy with Hardcore Survival, but I think it's too late now, so <laughs> we'll just stay with that. <laughs> so how, but, how long did it get? Did it take you to uh, to get people to chuck you down the, the 99 cracked red eye orbs that, yeah. you, that you need to start? <laughs> yeah, that was a guy called Kevin, actually. Um, really good friend. He, uh, I mean, I don't know if I want to say this on here. He may have not done it legitimately, but... <laughs> <laughs> but um uh yeah i mean using cracking powers for good on dark souls yeah <laughs> i wouldn't necessarily say good yeah well, <laughs> so so within the the course of that it's i mean it's it's been fun watching you use weapons that you maybe wouldn't normally use in the game is that is that part of the yeah part of the fun of i mean it? well the big one for me was the old night okay well the big night one for me was the old night hell but the um a big part of that series is that I haven't actually told anyone yet is that I pre-recorded the first five episodes about yeah, yeah, a few months ago, actually mm, wow. a, a long time ago. Yeah. And I, I'm not even sure why, but I just never uploaded them. And then I recently uploaded the first one and then people, people liked it. And it was definitely, definitely um, well received. And so I put up the second one. And then people realized that there was, I seemed to be very, it was almost like I was new to the game again in that I didn't know a lot of things and I seemed to be quite ignorant. And the thing is, that was because I played it for quite, I did, I recorded those quite near to release. I just never uploaded them. So I, 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 yeah, I can see where people are coming from. People got a bit annoyed that I, I just seem to be so bad. And that's why I haven't uploaded the, uh, the you know, the rest of the pre-recorded mm. material I had for that playthrough because I think I'm actually going to go back and do it now. Well, now that I have just re-record from from where I've got up to. Uh, I, say, I say release them as, you, as you've done them. I think there's this kind of an innocence to, to playing mm. it like that. If somebody's listening to the show, they'll, they'll know the reason why. But also if somebody's homed in on the video who maybe doesn't think that dark souls is for them i think that it can it can seem really uh, relatable mm. when somebody's playing and they they're not sort of master of ceremonies and they're not going thing, through things on autopilot where there's that oh my god i can't believe i've died here oh come on come on come on you know <laughs> that's even even as a, a a you know as a dark souls fan that's that's played through the games and stuff There'll yeah. be the points where, you know, if I'm if I'm exercising first thing in the morning or if I'm eating my dinner and I'm watching it, I'll kind of smile and I'll I'll giggle or I'll 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 go, <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, you've got out of that with like just that much health. And that's what makes them fun. I'm not I'm not watching them to see someone that's perfect at Dark Souls. I just enjoy seeing people play Dark Souls and enjoy it. Yeah, and I, 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 I think that innocence is a quality. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see people cock up. It's brilliant. 
Yeah, I, I would actually agree with you. I, I've had a bit of trouble recently with, with feedback in terms of with those videos and a few other things where I guess I wasn't taking the game as seriously as some people would like mm. in that I've had feedback of people telling me, you know, how are you so bad and yet you're one of the biggest Dark Souls channel and, it, you know, things like that. I had a bit of an issue with it recently, like a few weeks ago, where I was feeling a bit down about it and I was thinking, you know, maybe do people just want to see me do perfectly because if that's the case i'll just edit out everything that sucks you know but but i know is what makes it cool yeah that's but the thing is i think i've come to terms with it a bit more now and i'm just like no because i'm just not going to do that even if everyone else does that i I just want to even that just means i'm a bit different i I don't know it just seems i don't know who, who remembers that story of that time you did it perfectly no one does we all remember the story of the time you fucked it up royally and just scraped through by the skin of your teeth. That's, that's <laughs> the thing you remember. You don't remember the time you just glanced through things without hitting the sides. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, Drama. I, think, I think back to the first time that I, I played through uh, Dark Souls in particular. And this was uh, later down the line, I saw an epic name road playthrough and I was like, oh, so that's what that does. And oh, I could use that. And, but this first playthrough... I had no clue what I was doing. I was, I was, I was making tons of mistakes, but those mistakes were honest, and I was going in by instinct. And rather than like on um, when I was in Undead Parish, I got the Black Knight's uh, sword like really, really quickly, mm. um, and just thought, right, I'm going to level up to use this. Spent absolutely ages trying to get up to the strength requirement to be able to use it, and then sailed through about five or six areas afterwards and but even even along the way after that there was still mistakes and there was still i didn't know what i was doing but this there's, there's something beautiful in that and yeah. i look back at that first playthrough and it's it's precious it's special because of that ignorance because of that innocence and i, I wouldn't lose that quality to you videos because i know you you said you, you're looking for the quirk that makes him stand out from everybody else's. But people watch those videos for the person that's playing them. You invest in, in, in the personality as well. And, and making things perfect just dials it down, just makes it one tone and makes it predictable. And as, yeah. as a fan, I, all I can say is that I wouldn't want that. It's okay, that, yeah. that humanity. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I did. I recently did the... I did, I really let it get to me a few weeks ago. I've definitely kind of got over it now, and I'm just like, no, I'm sticking to what I know best. But I, I did the DLC, the, D, the Dark Souls 2 DLC that came out, the Sunken King. I did a, a sort of a playthrough. I recorded the whole thing, split it up into five episodes, and put up the first one, the first two. And, uh, I mean, um, a lot of people liked it, but there's actually a much more significant amount of people than usual that just said, you know how did you not know how to do this or how and i was like because it, it's my first playthrough you know yeah. i've never done this before i'm going in blind i don't know anything how did but you people, work it out genius <laughs> yeah but i and like i basically i couldn't figure out how to oh wait, patrick you haven't played it yet have you no have you? okay I, I won't spoil it but i just couldn't figure out how to do this one thing and people were calling me like yeah just going in on me <laughs> and i was like but mm. that's the whole point of watching a blind playthrough is you watch people you know, try and figure out how to get through the area because it's their first time. That's the whole point. But I got a lot of abuse for it. I don't know. It was just really bizarre. But I actually ended up. I don't. I mean, I actually ended up deleting all the rest. But I, oh. I'm not. I'm not getting. Yeah, I know. I, I'm not really proud of it. But I was really annoyed. <laughs> yeah, but, but I um, mean, going going back to what I was saying earlier, that that viewership is 175,000 at this point. And I've watched that a few times as well. And it's the, the fact that it's like, how are they doing that much damage? How am I supposed to do that? Oh, I can get, I can bring a summons in. Oh, right, I'm, I'm equipped with fire damage and, and dark damage. That's what makes it human. And the fact that if you're second guessing that by the amount of trolls that saying that you're not doing, doing it perfectly, yeah. 175,000 people have watched that and enjoyed it. And I'd wager a number of those people have come back and watched it again because they enjoyed it. So it's it's difficult not to get down on this sort of stuff when you do get um, people biting at your ankles. But just go on instinct and, and don't change what you're doing because that's the reason that people keep turning up. Yeah, yeah. I, 
I've definitely come to realise that now, but hmm. yeah, because I, I basically that fifth one, the you know the the last fight that you, the video you just spoke about was the last one, and in my opinion, it was the best one. So I thought I'll put that up as well as the first one, and hmm. just you know take out the four in between. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I, I yeah. Uh, people on the internet are always amazingly good at the game. You never see it, but they always say they're good. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I did that perfectly. Sure you did. Okay. But but we are a good community, and we've, we've mentioned before that people in general are, are pretty approachable in the in the community mm. as well. And, uh, you know, a lot of the folks that, that we've spoken to through, through Dark Souls have been fast friends. They've been good people. But yeah, I'm, from the outside looking in, there, there is a view that the Souls fans can be quite elitist. And the fact that there are videos that are approachable, that are humoured, that have got personality, I think that's dead important because that's the sort of thing, if I wasn't into a game and if I got preconceptions standing back from it, if I looked at that sort of thing, I'd be like, all right. And that that <clears throat> might be somebody's first in to get a, a group of games that they, they really, really love. So... Don't change it, mate. Just yeah. just go on instinct and be yourself. I know. I really like that. that it's your your main output's competitive PvP. Who'd have thought competitive PvP would be approachable in yeah. any yeah. part of the internet anywhere? Well, like, yeah, I think that has been. You talk about elitist people. I yeah, I think staggering. a lot of people yeah. I used to know, <laughs> um, you know, that we used to be good friends. I would consider them very elitist. Uh, now that I think about it, and they don't really speak to me anymore. And I, yeah, I definitely think that, I, yeah, I definitely tried to make it more friendly and inclusive, and you know, showcase the community, see, show what they can do, and just see how you can have fun while PvPing, and mm. it doesn't have to be ultra serious. And I've definitely had a few problems here and there with with certain people that uh, from the Demon Souls days who are very kind of arrogant, and and um, they. Like I've had a lot of people saying they wish the community was back in the Demon Souls days, where it was just a small niche group of people without any mainstream influence and that kind of thing. And I'm just thinking, I mean, it, it's, it's such a selfish mentality to have because mm. if you if with a game as good as this, why would you not want to share it with people who potentially would really enjoy it and yeah. and, and just show them how you can have fun with it, which is always what I've been trying to do. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think there's certain people that don't like that light-hearted approach and think it should remain a, a serious, uh, competitive game. But in that in, in that early community with with Demon Souls, because there wasn't the you know the the, the YouTube channels and the uh, and just the avenues for everybody to connect in in the same way, and certainly to not uh, not as huge a degree as there is now. Um, <laughs> whenever there'd be any article about it on the net, whether it be, uh, you know, for example, uh, Mike McWherty, when he used to really, really uh, sort of beat the drum for the for Demon Souls on, on Kotaku, there'd be this amazing comment section underneath with people uh, talking about, about builds and how they got through it and uh, how they came to the fore and all of these things which have been magnified and that have blossomed so wonderfully with YouTube channels, with podcasts, with 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 a larger community that's that's continuing to talk, but it all grew out of that nucleus. <clears throat> and I wouldn't mm. ever say that was elitist. And if somebody was looking at, felt that that was quite inclusive, that's that's a problem with their own clique and their and their own need to have something that's that's just in a pocket of their own. Because yeah. certainly everybody that loved that game was jumping up and down on fucking magic trampolines trying to get other people to. Uh, not just to get it, but also for it to uh, come over to Europe at that point as well. Mm. Yeah, well, it's just it's just a weird hipster mentality kind of thing. But then, yeah, if you confront them about it, they end up just con contradicting themselves completely, and they just mm. don't actually know what it is they want. And uh, yeah, they, they, they accuse you of really strange things that don't make sense. Like apparently, I was codifying the community and i was like <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't even know i was like i don't even know what you mean <laughs> but your videos showcase different unique interesting kills cod videos are, look at this no scope <laughs> yeah but yeah, i mean I think, yeah. now look at this no scope now try this no scope <laughs> i mean i'm i'm terrible at pvp and i think patrick's recently got better since he became uh, Cestus, Cestus yeah. rocky but um, <laughs> it's, it's something i i would have no idea how to 
build a competitive build or to take on half the people that I, I see in like uh, in the forest in, in Dark Souls and the such like I'm passionate about the game but I'm balls at that side of it but it's still exciting when somebody invades and it's still exciting when PvP yeah. sort of kicks in but to watch those videos having an avenue of the game that I don't really know a lot about has made it more accessible for me but it's also this this spotlight of fascination on it as well yeah well oh I had I had a thought then what was it what was I going to say <laughs> it was a really good thought <laughs> I've destroyed it. I've destroyed oh my the god! Gob, my god! Mind shine. wiped him. <laughs> my mind's just died. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, what do you what do you make of the uh, the comparisons or differences or your favourite stuff between Dark Souls and Dark Souls Two? Um, well, a lot of people have have because I know a lot of people had issues with Dark Souls Two, and I know I've heard a, a few people that sort of categorised their feelings for it in PVE PVP. And, um, yeah, no, I think PvP, PvE and PvP. And was saying, well, Dark Souls 1 had better PvE, but Dark Souls 2 had better PvP, and that kind of thing. And I'm not sure whether I categorize it like that. I really, really like both games pretty much equally mm -hmm. in terms of most things. I just think, for me, they're just two different games, and I, I really find it hard to put one above the other. Mm. Um, I, I I don't know. They're just Dark Souls One, obviously, because it had I played it. It just had more of a commute. It's because I've been playing it for two years, so mm -hmm. I it, it was just more of a a long term story building up kind of thing that that gave it some uniqueness for me. But Dark Souls Two, although it's coming from a place you know Dark Souls One, it's still new to me in very in various ways, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I just. Although it may have gone back in some respects, I think it's a really good game, basically. I think, I think within all three games, we've got three games that are very, very different from one another. I think we're a little bit spoiled with that. Yeah. Um, and I also think that there are a lot of people that came to Dark Souls with tons and tons of stuff already been already having been planned out with regards to people have dug into the lore and people have dug into the builds and stuff. And it's always exciting in those early moments when everybody is figuring stuff out or mm. you might be looking for for an in within the uh the law and I, I think that a few people have dismissed dark souls 2 maybe a little early yeah i yeah i definitely think a lot of people's criticism of dark souls 2 is unwarranted to be honest i mean in terms of like saying how it's so much worse than Dark Souls 1, well then I think you might as well just, if you feel like playing Dark Souls 1, pick up the disc and put it in, because you can. Yeah. You can mm. do that. There's still thousands of people playing it. Yeah. Like, even like, Demon's Souls, there's thousands of ghosts running around still. Yeah, how? It's not, like, it's not like those games have been destroyed is what I, is how mm -hmm. some people try and make it seem, and I'm just like, it's not true. They're still there. You can go and play mm. them right now. It's fun, it's fun to... Um, I went back to Dark Souls recently with a um, going through a, a playthrough with uh, with Laura Rich, who was on the show, and she'd not played the uh, the DLC, so she bought the DLC, and it was fun going from Dark Souls two back to Dark Souls and seeing that that wonderful quality that Miyazaki brings to it, and appreciating uh, even a lot of the things that I'd, I'd seen a million times before, just going through, looking at it with new eyes. But then to come back to Dark Souls two and look at look at that a little bit differently again. It was a yeah. nice process. There was a wonderful mm. contrast and a, um, I don't know, just a, a blissful dichotomy between the two, I guess. Yeah, there, there's definitely some massive differences. I think Dark Souls 1 is just, in my head, it's sort of crisper and cleaner and everything is just a bit sharper. I don't know how to explain it, but in terms of the controls and the movement and things like that, everything mm. is a lot more responsive, which... And then Dark Souls 2 is sort of a... It's just a different game for me. It's mm -hmm. more... I don't know. I don't know, really. It's a lot more of how I imagined Demon Souls would feel like, to be honest, mm -hmm. in terms of the movement and how mm -hmm. and the visuals. I'm not sure if that's true, but from what I saw of Demon Souls, it's kind of how I pictured uh, Dark Souls 2 to be. Um, yeah, I mean, I always... I always, When I played the... I I've used upon this when I played the beta for Dark Souls 2, it felt like a cross between the two. Like Dark mm. and Demons, Dark Souls 2 feels like a sort of a logical middle point between the two. Uh, sort of taking the best ideas out of both and mixing them together and mm. hitting and missing in different places, but a, yeah, a very worthy my... thing on its own right. 
Yeah, I, I really wonder how my opinion on it would change if I had played Demon's Souls, or if I did. I wonder, because, it, yeah, it just, that I reckon there's probably is uh, influences from both, of course, and I wonder mm. if I'd played Demon's Souls, whether I'd notice them, and it would change how I feel about it, but, um, yeah. I mean, Demon, Demon's Souls is really, really special, and some of the design work I've, I've seen uh, mirrored in, in Bloodborne, certainly the atmosphere, Um and it's it's it, that's that's one of the things that's got me excited about about Bloodburn certainly. But if there's anything that I really miss that was in Demon Souls that um, ch- was changed into the, from Dark Souls and then Dark Souls Two was um, there was there was much more weight to the combat that rather than things being as um, I don't know, as arcadey as it felt in uh, in Dark Souls with the responsiveness. In Demon's Souls, you were really trying to time when was the right time to hit because you've got this this human physicality within the within the swing, which mm. was which then became faster in in Dark Souls and faster again in Dark Souls too. But there was such strategy in waiting for that moment to strike and such fear within those pauses. Mm. Um, that still remains for me in, in Demon Souls, and it's even going back to it now. I, I still think I, I like that. I like having the having the, the the terror within those those sort of um tight muscled moments i guess so yeah a uh, dark souls one i think can be described as quite uh reaction combat based yeah as in i mean because you can obviously you can parry people by eye which in dark souls 2 you you, you can maybe depending on what you use but it's a lot different and it's more mm. you've you, got to you be see an enemy yeah, you see an enemy towards you and you instantly react to take it out. In Dark Souls 2, and I'm guessing from what you're saying in Demon's Souls, yes, yeah, a lot more about timing and spacing. Yeah. and It's a bit slower paced, I find. Yeah, I think, the, um, if I remember rightly, the, the, the stamina bars may be a touch slower as well. So you, I don't know, there's, there's, it just felt very, especially at the, at the time when it first came out, I'd, I'd never played anything like it. And I was trying to get my head around what, at the time, I'd, I'd sort of, stupidly termed like physics mathematics where i was sort of trying to think well if i can block that and then have to step back and then my stamina bar will go up and then i can hit harder and if they jump at me i can use their momentum never ever seen anything like that before and it freaked the life out of me but i really got into that feeling within this fantasy world like i was there and that my physical limitations were a part of that world and the bonding between sort of couch and, and TV screen was definitely there within that. So. But yes, leaping on to Bloodborne. Leaping believe... to the future. Yes, <laughs> I believe you both have played it as I try to set you on fire with my mind, living <laughs> liquid jealousy. Not only have I played it, I have played it twice. What? <laughs> and my other half has played it once. My new wife, which we should probably cover. Um, got married, everyone. <laughs> Realised we should have covered that an hour ago. Yeah. Um, got married, you know. Selfishly. Self- <laughs> yeah, not thinking of the podcast. I know, right? That's why we've been dead for a while, because Shocking. of the wedding. But now that's out of the way. She can now go clean the house, and I can make podcasts again. Oh, Yay, Patrick. sexism! <laughs> weren't, there like, weren't there like five hour lines for Bloodborne at some it was point and... four and a half hour line for the Bloodborne bit at Sony's I particularly think their booth was organised very poorly it was a bit better towards the later half of the week Yeah. but th- uh, Thursday god awful there was one queue to get into Bloodborne and then when you got out of that queue you could then get into another queue to play the order which was a much shorter queue but still um, so anyway we got to I, I, you know, me and Laura my, my, my lady wife Got to Germany, banded around a bit, you know, walked around in the convention centre a bit, tried a couple of games like, you know, the Drive Club and the Little Big Planet. And we thought, right, OK, Bloodborne time, let's go. Got to the end of the queue. I was like, bit of a wait. I was like, ah, it's fine. How little, <laughs> how little we knew. Mm-hmm. Um, and joined the queue and sat down. And then about two hours later, uh, as the queue was snaking past, um, I, I see a little sort of blonde quiff in the distance. <laughs> and I thought... I think that might be Sunlight Blade. I see uh, a little silhouette of a blade. Scalaboose, scalaboose, can you do the fandango? Yeah. And then across the crowd, you just hear, Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening, <laughs> jink! 
I like to think that's how it played out, and nothing you can tell me now will ruin that. Oh, well, what actually happened is we Heaven walked opened. past, and I just thought, yeah, I just walked past and sort of tapped to it. You sunlight blade. It was the most surreal moment yeah. of that whole like, trip. Yeah. I went, Hello. <laughs> I was like, who the hell is? No, I'm joking. I was yeah. eating. <laughs> this no. ginger fuck. There are three ginger people in the world, and one of them is on this podcast. <laughs> it's a one in three chance. This That's is I think fact. <laughs> oh crap! It's Mick Hucknall. <laughs> but it was a very surreal moment because he tapped me on the shoulder and said, "Are you sunlight blade?" I said, "Yes." And then I saw he was ginger, <laughs> and I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, I'm, I'm not even making this joke. I'm just going to sit here smiling. Yeah. I was thinking, um, is there no way is that Paddy from the podcast? And I saw um, there was a woman next to him, and I thought, oh, he just got married. And then he said, I'm Paddy from, from the podcast. I was like, no way. And then from our right, an Australian man called Daniel yep. uh, came over and went, are you Paddy from the podcast? And awesome. wait, do you want to take over, Patrick? Yeah, I will, yeah. So we were just making our little howdy do's, how's it going? And yeah, this wonderful guy, Daniel. Um, hello, by the way. Um, uh, a lovely Australian type man. Yeah. Uh, just sort of leaned over and went, hang on, you're, you're ginger? I went, yeah. <laughs> and you're British? Yeah. And you like Dark Souls? Because I had a Dark Souls t-shirt on at that point. Uh, yeah. You don't think you those old, the, those old guess who board games, just like glasses, a hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I murdered Mr. Black. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he was like, oh, are you? I was like, yes, I am. Oh, God. And did little, you know, little handshakes and a little, a little gas in the queue. <laughs> and then completely blew my mind and completely made the whole wait for the queue worth it because he asked for my picture, <laughs> which, oh, my God, my ego blew up inside my edge. <laughs> oh. Yeah, what about his camera? Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. you, Paddy. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, he asked for a picture and I, I've never felt like a celebrity before. So <laughs> cheers, dude. <laughs> that proper, was an amazing nice moment. Proper nice chap. I wish we could have chatted more because like, the queue kind of took us different ways about five minutes later. Um, but yeah, you had a really good chat with him, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So because uh, pa- Paddy was dragged away by the tide, but uh, we were we were stood we were stood together. <laughs> the visuals, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> floods of people. <laughs> there was three hundred thousand people there, but um, yeah. Uh, so he, he we went around the queue together, basically next to each other, just talking the ho- like for five hours. Uh, as the queue was, but yeah, he was telling me he after a bit of chatting, he eventually um, realised that he he had heard of me before. He, like he, I think he'd seen my videos or something, but it took him a while to remember. But um, yeah, pretty much we were just talking about you and how we met your podcast and that kind of thing. I think he listened to a few other podcasts, but I was saying how I didn't really know any other ones. So we we just had a really good chat. But yeah, he really he was he really liked you. Oh, wow. Really liked the podcast. Yeah, we really like you too. <laughs> <laughs> He's a really, really nice guy. Cool guy. Um, so yeah, anyway, the, the queue snakes on. Uh, four hours later, we approach the front. And you know that thing when you're in a queue and they let a bunch of people in and then they stop you just so you get to the front. You're like, oh, oh fuck no. off. <laughs> Nearly there. So we got up to the front and had a lovely chat with a Sony man at the front with a nice Sony t-shirt on. Uh, you know, so now away from, you know, from England. Oh, we're on honeymoon. We went, oh, that's really cool. Just sort of chatting away. You didn't just like to use your new celebrity status and just do a wry smile and go, have you heard of the Twin Humanities podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you <laughs> know who I am? Yeah, and then, <laughs> then just produce your own tumbleweed as like Gamescom goes silent and then <laughs> Sunlight Blade just like runs across to the other side of Gamescom and you just pitch it like a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and then a comb and shame. Yes. Uh, but no, chatting away and really nice guy, you know, was like, oh, cool, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, and then, you know, got let in to play some Bloodborne. Um, you got a lead through. There's a room with like six screens. So they're only letting six people at a time. Yeah. Uh, no cameras, which you completely uh, uh, followed that rule, didn't you? I very much did. Oh, yeah, definitely. I love um, rules. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly no recording devices were used to take photos of the screen at all, were they? <laughs> well, no, I don't even know why you'd bring that up. I, mean, I don't know. Why, why are we talking about this? Let's move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they let you jump in, and it's uh, you're in like the area they've used in a lot of the promo stuff, sort of like a sort of a sort of Victorian y, gothic y sort of uh, town. Um, there's ladders, there's staircases, there's, there's sort of wheelchairs and prams and horse drawn carriages. There's no horses, just the carriages. You know, just 
in in the way that you know the, the best ways that the, the Soul series have done it, there's just dank shit everywhere. <laughs> like it's grey, it's miserable. There's crap on all the floors, and everything looks disgusting. It's very atmos- atmospheric, yeah. Oh god, yeah, and like the, just the outfit as well, like the duster coat with the big white hat. Like, mm. sign me up. I want one of those. I'd wear that in public. It's a hot look. It looks yeah. incredibly responsive. Mm. It's very... The controls, it feels um, like you're playing a dex build, like a light, rolly dex build. You feel okay. a lot nippier. And maybe that was just because that's the character they've made for the demo. Mm-hmm. And mm. there could be heavier options available. But it did feel a lot lighter, a lot quicker. Um, <clears throat> the dodging mechanics are a bit different now. Um, if you hit the circle button when you're just running about, it does a roll. Uh, but if you're locked on, it does like uh, like a sidestep, like a scoot. All right. Which is a bit panicky at first. Think, oh god, am I going to dodge it? Oh, okay, I dodged it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. And that's what the other the other big obvious difference um, is. You have your transforming weapon, uh, which controls a touch differently than you'd expect. Mm. Just a touch. Um, so you've got your your, your straw attack and your hard attack on R1, R2, as normal. Um, L2 is given to the offhand weapon, which in, this was just a gun, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, and L1 is dedicated to doing the um, the transform on the weapon. Yeah. So that doesn't do anything with the gun, it does the transform. Mm. So many times, I was going in for a final quid, ha-ha, and then just transformed the weapon and stood and looked at the guy. <laughs> that, was, that was my own fault. I am very willing to say, that's not the game's fault, that's me forgetting. <laughs> um, and I think the triangle button now, rather than uh, rather than switching to two hands, is now your dedicated heal button. Oh, I wasted all my healing items trying to put it in two hands. That's Same here. Enough. Yep, yep. <laughs> just just I popping blood. I gr- I grabbed the controller and was just yeah just chugging down every healing item I had with full health. It was great. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then, once you've worked out, it's like oh. <laughs> I was like, why does he keep like what? Because he sort of. It's that blue sort of swishing motion, isn't it? Yeah. I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> Just put it in two hands, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the actual the actual demo itself, there's a, a couple of enemies at first. You know, you meet them in ones and twos. Like like the start of any, you know, level in any game. You, you sort of meet them in ones and twos and you learn what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and before long, you, you go down the staircase and there's like six. Um, yeah, that's where I died. <laughs> yeah, I also died there. Uh, I thought... <laughs> Let's go attack these six guys. I think I can do this. I'm a cool guy. Yet yeah, no. So I think it was the NBA video where he said that you get these packs of people that that will sort of wander around the level, mm. and uh, mm. really it's it's almost the the first time since Demon Souls where you've had someone that's not just been rooted to the spot. Mm. They are um, mobile. They wander about, uh, and that's where I died the first time. Obviously, respawned as quick as I could, but didn't quite get that far before a man had tapped me on the shoulder and said, "It's time to go." I was like, "What? I've only been here a minute." Um, but then I had the chance of going back the next uh, on Sunday, sorry, uh, and queuing to go into the Sony truck uh, in the middle of Hall Seven, uh, the Sony Hall. Uh, mm. They parked a whacking great truck, uh, and inside it were fourteen screens. With lots of different games in them, like you know, mm-hmm. adult ones. So you got the Order, you've got your uh, your Bloodborne, uh, Far Cry, that sort of thing, uh, Alien Isolation, uh, Counter Spy, uh, the new sort of digital one coming out. So we got that queue instead on the Sunday, which was way better. It was an hour. All oh, right, cool. Now you're, and then I was at the front of the queue, and the lady at the front was very nice, and she said, "Right, what ward do you want to play?" I was like, "Bloodborne." So right, okay, go in, go to the right, and it's that screen that's facing away with that guy in the hat on it right now. I was like, "Thank you." Straight in, um, and took out. Uh, actually managed to beat the six guys this time. Yeah. Beat them so, all. So what what did you do this time that you didn't do the, the first time? Um, I was more patient mm-hmm. because I knew I had a, a little while to do it because we were sort of timing it roughly and you got about 15 minutes in the truck. I was like, okay, I've got a bit of time. So I, I took my time, explored a bit and I sort of saw the six guys and ran away, explored down the way and came back at it. And by that point they'd all walked off. So I was able to progress a little bit and kind of go up a little mm. sideway uh, and start taking them out one by one from the top, which was... Oh, cool. Took a little while, admittedly. You know, I was having to sort of, you know, sort of farm them out one by one and try and sort of separate them out in ones and twos. Um, there's some really good placement as well of, like, enemies with crossbows stood on top of stuff that you can't get to. Uh-huh. You've got to huck, like, firebombs and things at them from there. Um, yeah, I've seen that, that um, like, you can pick up pebbles and stuff to... to yeah. To... 
pick enemies away from I the pack. I didn't use the pebble, but I picked mm. a few up. But I never actually used it because I was too busy getting stabbed. Mm-hmm. I never um, found any. Really? Oh, no, there, yeah. was like, there was like 10 of them. I had loads at the end of my time with it. Um, I missed a lot of things that people found. It was kind of weird. I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. Did, you, did you get to the big smashy door? No. no uh, so the guys you meet, the six, they're walking up toward, like, down a pathway. And at the end of that pathway is a big fire and then a big door. And something is banging on the back of it. Because you can see the door shuddering on its hinges. And you're like, oh, no, I'm going there, aren't I? <laughs> Oh no! And then I did go there very shortly after taking out the clump. Uh, and you go around and you sort of sneak around very carefully. I mean, I didn't look at what else was in the area behind it. I kind of snicked around it and I was like, I'm just going to see what's behind the door. Big, burly, fat, hulky looking guy. Oh, the guy with the kind of hammer for a fist that goes like, hit, 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 hit. He's holding a yeah. breeze block. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> um, I was literally. Uh, the hair of a bollock away from killing him. <laughs> his health bar was gone, but he was still stood up. It's like, I can't even see his health bar. One more hit will do it. And he caught me a lucky blow with his breeze block. And then I decided to pass over to the man who stood behind me because I thought I was hogging it. Because there was only one screen in that truck. And I thought, oh, I've got to pass it on. I've got to be a bro. Did you get a sniff of that sort of risk and re- uh, regain uh, system within those fights. Yeah, I saw my health come back every now and again. When you kill a guy, you get blood, which fills your health up a bit. And... No, it's supposed to be like if you if somebody stabs you, that if you uh, when you get that yellow bit that that appears on the bar just before it then follows through and disappears, that if you attack them within that moment, that you don't lose all of that health, you get some oh, of it back. Did not know that. Did yeah, not see that at all. I saw Did blood go into me every now and again, but I didn't see that. Oh, well, maybe maybe I did do that and didn't realise. Mm. I, I didn't realise a lot of these things at the time. I've done a lot more research now, and I think mm. I've pretty much figured out everything. But yeah, it, a lot at the time while playing it, it just because you know you're just thrown into it with only ten minutes to, to try to do as much as you can. Mm. I was pretty much trying to figure out the controls and then just run as far as I can before they kick me off, which is no time at all, really. But yeah, there's yeah. definitely a lot of. A lot of new things. What, it's interesting you said earlier, like you started off by saying the controls looked cleaner, like quicker and things, CJ. But mm. I, that's that's one of the reasons why. And that's the thing I noticed straight away, actually, Patrick. I, I, Patrick, you didn't seem to think it had been was that much, but I don't know. I thought there was no input lag and it didn't feel floaty at all compared to Dark Souls 2, which mm. sort of does a bit. Mm-hmm. It was it was tight, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, like, there's no. So for example, when you're the difference between when you start jogging and you're sprinting, there's no delay like in Dark Souls 2. Like that, that acceleration, that acceleration, that kind of that kind of thing. Mm. It, it just felt really quick and responsive to me. That I thought that was a big improvement that I liked. Mm. Felt tight, didn't it? Like when you moved, you moved. It, yeah, yeah. That, that that was a big part for me that I enjoyed that quite a lot. So have you seen the the, the part of the the epic name bro vid where he where he says. Uh, he shows the massive spider. Yeah, I saw that. God, I, I saw the p- picture. Like, when, what, where? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't notice that at all. No, me neither. Well, a, a lot, a lot's been likened to uh, Tower of Latria, uh, atmosphere-wise, from, mm. from from Demon Souls. And it was there's a part like way, way into playing Demon Souls where I looked up when I got outside, and there was a giant spider web covering everything. And the mm. fact that you're in this prison. And then you walk out of it, and there's a huge spider web <laughs> over it. Was just this degree of, <gasps> and I, I can just imagine the fact that you'd be playing that game and then look up and just think, "I'm going to fight that in a bit, aren't I?" <laughs> and you'd just be terrified. Mm. That's awesome. I think a lot of in the Dark Souls One and Dark Souls Two and Demon Souls, I think you're. To an extent, especially in the early game, you feel very, very weak and as if you can't really make that much of an impression on the world around you because everything yeah. is so much bigger and so intimidating. Mm. Um, it, it just it just makes you feel very small. But, uh, you know, after a while, obviously, as you progress through the game, you realise that you, you're pretty much a boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I think in um, Bloodborne, I don't know about you, Patrick, but I felt a bit more badass. Uh, yeah, to an extent. I, I think the, the transforming weapon helped. Cause it was like, yeah, look at this shit. Cho-chonk! Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just because, obviously, you, we don't know how early or late in the game that was exactly. I, th- yeah. I know it was early game to an extent, but, um, po- yeah, I don't know. It just felt, maybe the clothes had something to do with it. And everyone seems 
you, did you think everyone seems a bit taller and quite thin? <laughs> yes, definitely. Everyone seems a bit more gaunt and a bit... But yeah, they stand up a bit straighter. Or maybe yeah. they're, they're hunched but taller, but they definitely... Everyone feels a bit more upright and skinny. Yeah, that, that was the thing. But yeah, I don't know. I just felt a bit more... Um, maybe it's the gun as well, to be honest. I don't know. I felt like mm. I, I looked a bit more uh, impressive, perhaps. A bit more like Vampire Hunter D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe my Izaki thought as well that too many people were... I mean, I'm, I can be included in this. Too many people were hiding behind shields in, mm. in the Souls games and to, yeah. to, to make things a little quicker and more reactionary. And yeah. I can only imagine what PvP will be like. God, it's going oh, to be frantic. Goodness. I've 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 just been working on a Bloodborne video and I've actually been looking at how what potentially because obviously when you're locked onto an enemy you you press circle you actually do a dash a sidestep but if you're mm. unlocked you actually roll so if you think about it in in a single combat situation depending on what attack your enemy uses it might be better to roll or it might be better to sidestep so mm. you're going to have to be constantly locking on and unlocking so when you have that and coupled with the fact that weapons can now be have different versions and like extend and, and shorten um, and even extend while as you swing which is a, mm. a, a different attack so that's three different attacks right like co- potential combinations and it's just I think it's going to be actually really just the potential to be a lot more diverse and i don't know how to explain it but a lot more not complicated but complex potential like if you, as complex as you want it to be mm. it sounds like it's going to have that degree of strategy that the dark souls stuff's got but with this real burst of adrenaline that you can't sort of hide at all that it's, it's got to be like what's my counter move how do i get beyond that how do i get around them rather than right i'll hide behind my shield a bit or I'll do that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Especially with yeah. with things being uh, much more reactionary, as you, as you said, mm. with the controls and, and much much swifter. Yeah, that's going to be really interesting to see yeah. how yeah, it plays yeah. out. I think you definitely have to be ballsier. I mean, I think the shotgun is a good example of that because just if you just shoot enemies randomly, I didn't find it did that much. It did. It was, it was crap. Yeah. It just kind of makes <laughs> them go. Oh, whereas yeah. if you shoot them like mid swing staggers them stuns them and it get, lets you get in a you know a little repost on them yeah. so it's 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 probably i mean i think it's like the evolution of the parry yeah it's quite like, a counter shot now isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's like it's it's where the parry's gone and i i kind of like that because i found in dark Souls 2 particularly i can't fucking parry <laughs> i don't think i've ever hit a single one i just take the hit i don't see what the point of trying anymore is because it's like i can't <laughs> i can't read this anymore i don't know where the the moment is that it counts yeah, yeah, well, single enemies, what, like one-on-one fights, were definitely no problem at all. It was definitely when you had a group of enemies, but like, y- you still can't just, you definitely cannot mash your way through everything and just button no. match. It's definitely not like that. I tried that with a group of enemies and got really punished for it. Um, I mentioned this in, in the video I just did, so it feels kind of weird saying it again, but mm. like, y- um, you, you have to be patient and pick your fights to an extent, but I think it's more playing tactically as in how do I approach these enemies but then once I've approached them it will be badass balls to the wall just like mm-hmm. going for it and mm-hmm. yeah much more aggressive because obviously your health will regenerate uh, once you hit an enemy quick enough to regenerate that lost health so I wonder how yes. that will work in PvP yeah I mean I can see you can health back off guys by being a, a brave countering man I, I hope they do it so that it doesn't lead to just R1 button mashing. Yeah. Uh, but as long as it doesn't lead to that, then it should be good. Mm. Yeah, but I think I think when you've got mechanics like the the lock on, lock off, doing the either the, the roll or the or the sidestep, that there's is it sounds like there's much more to it, and it's probably in a, a, a I don't know a, a nuance like Street Fighter that you might get somebody coming in with their button mashes, but the strategic people know how to read that, know how to counter it, and can probably take them out in a, yeah. uh, a number of blows. So it might it might build up that kind of uh, I don't know, duality between those that just think like, right, and, and yeah. those that'll be like, yeah, I've got you, mate. I've got you paid instantly. <laughs> got your number. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but well, yeah, you for, know, me, I mean, for me, it felt like Bloodborne feels like it's a Souls game. It is a Souls game. It might not say Souls on the box, but it is a Souls game. But it feels like they're doing it different again. They're doing the, the they're doing it. They're they're taking the formula and they're playing it's new. with it. It's a breath yeah. of fresh air. I really did think that. Yeah, definitely. Because I really I'm, think they needed that. They're being brave. 
I'm curious as to uh, as to when another player comes into your world. I've heard it hinted at that when somebody comes into your world, it's not like oh, there's a red phantom, there's a white phantom. If somebody comes into your world, they might be on your side, they might not be on your side. Mm. There might be a bit of both going on. They might help you out for a bit. And then do you in? Oh, imagine if they gave you free roam to do that. Like there was no, like, so they they strip out the whole concept of you know, red phantoms and white phantoms, and it's just someone's there now. Are they a yeah. friend? Who are they? Yeah, mm-hmm. do I trust them? Or, or you know, you could be going along and you could you could twat a number of en- enemies with someone, and they could go into to the boss, and you could just go for them instead of the boss. That there's mm. this mistrust and uncertainty. Oh, the All role the players would love that. <laughs> awesome it would it would also because for dark souls wasn't their original intent to make the player feel alone and abandoned and really lonely get a sense of loneliness in there apparently that's what they wanted to do um but uh but obviously people like sort of skewed that a bit by summoning for every single boss and just (laughs) destroying everything but Mm -hmm. that would be a lot more interesting because it would it just make it seem more realistic as if this person's just uh, happens to be where you are. Could he help you? Could he not? He could do both. Um, just... Could you imagine some of your videos where it's like, it was like, right, we've re- received this submission, and uh, such and such has gone into this game, and they've helped the player out, and they've defeated a few enemies. Then they've gone into the boss battle. They've taken the the other player down to like a minute bit of health. Then they've taken out the boss. Then they've gone back for the player. And it just... <laughs> Can you imagine that within the, the midst of chaos and just going like, oh, he's helping me out now, but why are you attacking me? Oh, my God. Do I focus on you? Do I focus on the enemy? Um, and especially if maybe there's some kind of multiplier that goes on. And now, let's look, and now let's look at number seven. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make some really exciting videos. Yeah. yeah I'm, it, I'm just um, having to... Uh, come to terms with the fact that I'm probably going to be buying a PS4 in the near future. <laughs> One of and, uh, us. That was yeah. that was the that was the the decider for me was was Bloodborne. It, mm. There's no way I, I couldn't. And also, I know they've. I looked into this, and they they said that Bloodborne isn't Demon Souls 2. Yet everybody said that the game feels a lot like uh, Demon Souls within the atmosphere. And then on the the gameplay video that they put out of Bloodborne, they had Iveta Mura Dasilova. Say that again. Iveta Mura Dasilova. <laughs> I can say it better the second time. Is that uh, who was the the maiden in black in Demon Souls? Oh, okay, yep. Giving the uh, the the final words in in the Bloodborne trailer, and I'm wondering if, whilst they're saying this isn't Demon Souls two, as in a direct follow-up to Demon Souls. Mm. I'm wondering if they, uh, this this little teaser and this little kicker is is the fact that it is set in the in the same world or the or the same universe. Because a while back when we were looking into it, the the broken arch stone in Demon Souls mm. led to the Beastlands, and everybody yeah, was going yeah, like, yeah. "Ooh, I'm wondering if that could still be a thing." And it's just whilst they're saying it's not Demon Souls two, it, as in it doesn't play like Demon Souls two. Mm. Maybe there's a bit of smoke and mirrors there, and it, mm. it, it, there are going to be these connections to Demon Souls as to as to whether they're going to put them out there or just leave people to speculate and connect even when the game comes out. Ooh, yeah, because <laughs> well, it felt completely brand new to me. But I hadn't played Demon Souls, so maybe. maybe I mean, I got right. I got shades of demons when I was playing it, definitely. So. Well, it's the I, same yeah. the same art designer as as Demon Souls and Dark Souls, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of Ooh. part of me just wants wants them to just just cut it off though and really go wholeheartedly for something new. I don't know. I haven't well, played Demon Souls. The whole so. blood thing is is you know definitely something that they haven't done before. I mean, it's all been souls before, isn't it? And this way, you you're literally harvesting blood to heal yourself. Yeah. Uh, okay. Which is kind of cool. I like it. I guess I'm I'm just still connected to demons because <laughs> it was my first. <laughs> it's just like I, I, I there's so much in Demon Souls that they could they could explore and that they could do stuff with and mm. i don't know they, that game still turns me inside out even to to go back <laughs> to it now so <laughs> so with regards to uh bloodborne do you, do you think it's a, a system seller for the, for the ps4 because obviously i've got one for it let's see you just did it um sunlight blade's probably going to buy one i think i know a lot of people that are going to buy a ps4 because of bloodborne yeah i think i think it's a lot of people 
that have played the Souls games. So I'm, mm-hmm. I was thinking, if you hadn't heard of the Souls games, you never heard of the Souls series, and you're a PS4, you have a PS4, you've never heard of anything previously, and you just see this title called Bloodborne. I'm wondering whether how people feel about it once they read about it, once they research it, think, is that for me? I really would like to know like how people completely new to this sort of series, if you will, like think about it. That would be really interesting to know. I think that, I mean, from the stuff I've, I've seen on, uh, on forums and underneath news articles, that's exactly it. There's people that are, that are new to the PS4 are just seeing the most exciting game on the system that's not going to be available anywhere else. And uh, a lot of those people aren't Souls veterans, um, but just well, see a game that just looks exciting. But, you know, there's this this build up around Miyazaki that is adored by people that have loved the series previously and he's doing something different and that it's difficult that it's atmospheric that it's got that look to it because the art design is just astonishing yeah. and I, th- I think that people are getting really taken by this singular vision this really exciting game that's got no equal on on the other consoles mm. Yeah, and there, seems, there seems to be a bit of port begging <laughs> from sort of like PC yeah. owners as well oh it'll come to PC it, it, it's not <laughs> yeah, that it's actually the, not. <laughs> the exclusivity thing is such a double-handed sword, isn't it? But mm. yeah, it's really, really interesting to see what what will happen to the existing. I don't know. I don't even know whether to say the word community anymore. But yeah, what will happen to the existing Souls community? Will it be divided? Will mm. will they all move? Uh, that would be an interesting, interesting times. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the Souls YouTube and streamers guys they use the PC version, don't they? Mm. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. That lots, really I mean, me. What I've seen, lots of them do. Um, yeah. And I'm just interested to see how that. Yeah, like you say, how that will transfer over to a console only game. Because I mean, obviously, Demon Souls doesn't quite have the the coverage that Dark and Dark Two have had. Um, be interesting to see how that's. But then again, with the PS4, you can press a button and you know share your clip with the world. They're they're plugging in YouTube to it soon, so it might even be easier. Yeah. On the so yeah. So, so two two hundred. Uh... 200 nominations for your top 10 might just be the tip of the iceberg, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to press that button every day. Okay, yeah. Hey, look at this kill. Look at this kill. Look yeah, here's, this kill. here's 10 minutes. You figure it out. Yeah. I would have I've cut it down, but the me... whole the whole thing's good. Like... I've literally had someone send me like two hour clips before. I'm just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> Absolutely okay, throw, not. Throwing this out there, um, the, with um, the the furore that happened with uh, Tomb Raider going to Xbox One, uh, Ooh, Tomb Raider yeah. 2 going to Xbox One, and with... Rise we, of the Tomb Raider. Whilst we found out later that it was only a, a timed exclusivity... Is it, though? I could you imagine to... if... No, I, I think it is timed exclusivity. Oh, okay. It's just for the holidays of two, 2015 that, it's, uh, yeah. that it's Xbox One. Um could you imagine if if Microsoft um, approached from and uh, Demon Souls, sorry, Dark Souls three was going to be exclusive to Xbox One, like properly exclusive, and from basically divvied up their properties by going right, Dark Souls is now Xbox, Bloodborne is PS4, <laughs> and it'd be interesting to see how that would play out. That would be such a nightmare Other than for the comments that would be being a bitch. quite poor. Yeah, I remember when uh, with Capcom around the the GameCube and PS2 era, uh, divvied up. Was it Devil May Cry was PlayStation, yeah. Resident Evil was GameCube, and Dino Crisis was Xbox, and they kind of pushed pushed those separate properties at least initially uh, onto the different formats before the, the GameCube really wasn't selling massively, and uh, Resident Evil Four then jumped to. To, uh, to PS2, but I just think it'd be interesting if if From did do that, and also, you know, if Microsoft are looking for properties that they can perhaps combat uh, any potential success with Bloodborne on, because Dark Souls 3 will be a thing, mm. um, and if Microsoft threw money into that, enough money to make a make a difference and get an exclusive, I think it'd be in their interest. Plus, you you then have you know, Bloodborne, PS4, and, and Dark Souls 3, Xbox One, and presumably PC, I guess. And then we've all got to spend lots of money. Yeah, yeah. but I, I don't know. I could I could see it happening, especially mm. if Microsoft are, 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 are proactive about 
trying to find those those little bits that maybe they could they could keep for their own as to however think, long it might be. The thing with with um third because the reason why third third party exclusives are so rare these days is because it it just like for example if Nintendo released a Nintendo game obviously that would be exclusive to Nintendo consoles that makes mm. sense mm-hmm. console sellers that kind of thing but when I just find it weird how like with the Tomb Raider thing that's a third party game publisher that has made their well uh, you said you said it's a timed exclusive but still mm-hmm. I thought it was a bit weird because mm. in the end even if Microsoft pays them a bit more to I don't think it covers the lost sales. Well, the, um, I saw um, it was either a piece on YouTube or I was listening to a podcast, and they, they were saying uh, people can just think that it would be, oh, you know, PlayStation would account for two and a half million copies, so we'll give you the equivalent of two and a half million. But the the way that that will will actually divvy out would be sort of Microsoft. Um, taking control of the marketing for the game uh, and mm-hmm. doing all the TV adverts or prominent placing on the on the storefront or they will take the magazine adverts. Uh, so it's it's not really a, a, a direct payment. It's just mm-hmm. taking a lot of the the weight off the I mean, developer's I just, I, shoulders. I um, find it baffling when, when a company, when a game that's always been multi-platform then suddenly goes exclusive. It, like when, uh, what was it, did that? It's a very risky Splinter, decision. Splinter Cell did that, didn't it? It was on everything, and then it wasn't. And it's, yeah. but why? Like, I understand if it's always been exclusive. Fine, go for it. But, but like, just, I, I saw yeah. some numbers. The the Tomb Raider uh, Definitive Edition, the one that came out on next gen, sold like three to one on the PS4, and they're just throwing that away. It just seems like there's got to be a lot of money in that. I mean, I, I think there was there was some interesting wording me. at the start, and um, I think by probably Easter. Um, you'll probably get it on on PS4 Easter 2016. Mm-hmm. But in all honesty, that sort of stuff doesn't bother me as much as when you get something like an Assassin's Creed or, or Metal Gear Solid, uh, The Phantom Pain's doing this, where there'll be exclusive stuff to the PlayStation mm-hmm. and then exclusive stuff to the Xbox One. And to <laughs> get the get the full experience, you'd have to get both versions and both titles. Although That's, apparently. Apparently, it has unlocked both bits on both consoles now. All oh, right, okay. Of what I've heard, I might be wrong, but that's what I've heard. It's unlocked all of it now, so but now you know it's... what I mean. When you, I know what you see mean. Yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. like an Assassin's Creed has three extra levels and sixty extra minutes of content on PS4 and stuff. Well, to get weird. everything from Watch Dogs, you had to buy eighteen copies of the game from different websites. Yeah, <laughs> that seems a bit wanky. Just serves to piss everyone off. Mm. <laughs> so it seems we we bounced into briefly into other games. Yeah. Um, what else caught your eye at, at, um, at Gamescom? Uh, well, why don't you go first? Because I've got a massive list. Okay, yeah, my list is definitely a lot shorter. Um, uh, I played Evolve. That was the second big thing that I played. I really, really, really liked. And I think, is that a PS4? I, do you not like it's it? Or something? Is that why you're laughing? <laughs> no, it's, isn't, that, isn't that one Xbox exclusive? No, no, it's on everything. Oh, Are you really? sure? Yeah, pretty sure it's Valve's new joint. They have they've done it. I believe no, it's on it's, everything. It's, it's not Valve, is it? It's people that used to work for Valve. The Left 4 Dead people. Yeah, but yeah. I thought that was Xbox exclusive. Oh, it's coming out on everything as far as I'm aware. Because I saw a video which said that uh, that was one of the games that people, which hadn't, like, very little buzz, which people didn't realise mm. how good it is. Yeah. Until, I agree, until agree, it's been played. Really I, I was warned off by the queue. Like we just we've done the four and a half hours in the Bloodborne queue. Like no, fuck it, I can't. I can't do another queue. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as the Bloodborne queue, but it was a significant queue for sure. But um, yeah, I, I really liked it for sure. That'll be a game that I, I think I'll pick up definitely. Uh, aside from that, though, um, I played a few Nintendo games uh, like Super Smash Bros, which I'm crap at. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, that that was, I also the order eighteen eighty six, which I didn't actually like, but um, Laura yeah. didn't like it either. I quite enjoyed it, but no, my uh, my wife. Uh, uh, so it's still fun <laughs> to say that um, she didn't like it either, and she was really really excited for it, and she was like, "Oh, I didn't like it." I was like, what do you "Mean? I shot a cloud of dust and then blew it up. Like, I, that's that's just like pure things I like right there. Like, I shot a cloud and then I blew up the cloud. Brilliant." <laughs> But no, oh, Laura was quite down on it as well, and mm. uh, I mean, it's it's quite. I mean, from what I played of it, it's 
quite a standard third person shooter, isn't it? Really, I mean, it's shoot a thing, cutscene, yeah, shoot a thing, yeah. cutscene. But I, I dig the aesthetic, like, I like the Victorian sort of steamy looking sort yeah, of steampunk. Gears of steampunk. I yeah, don't yeah. often like steampunk though, but I liked this, it was like Victorian punk in a yeah. way. I can definitely appreciate that, but yeah, it just felt a bit sort of generic to me. I'm not sure, maybe, maybe I'll have to try it again. I don't know, it's just yeah. a demo, of course, but yeah. I like the, the coats. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's a sick coat is what is what sells the game these days. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was all I played. That they're pretty much. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Uh, my, <laughs> list, my list is maybe a tiny bit longer. Um, okay, so I'm just going to buzz through them very quickly while we were there. Things that stood out. Uh, Little Big Planet Three. Uh, tried that. We tried out the dog character, which I believe is called Odd Sock, which mm-hmm. can run and jump and bounce off walls. Fun. Controlled nice, and a lot of people that complain about Little Big Planet's floaty jumps will be very uh, pleased. He looked a bit, a bit. Um, Thomas was alone from the uh, um, from the video with you know the different characters yeah, and the I size and weight, that. And to, factoring independently into the puzzles that well, you've funny, got. It's funny you say that. There's a Thomas was alone uh, outfit pack coming for it. Brilliant, absolutely it, brilliant. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it is basically just cardboard boxes, but like. <laughs> No, I like just, that. Just squares, but they're different coloured and different shaped squares based on which character's using them. I, I, I like that. I thought that was cool. Uh, that's, yeah, a, that's, a, well. that's a nod and a wink to the influence, though, I think. I think that's definitely. really classy. Uh, definitely. Uh, we played uh, Drive Club. I think Drive Club was the first thing we played, actually, when we got in. It was right at the front. We're like, yep, playing that. Mm. Uh, feels a bit like Gran Turismo. Mm. Uh, you drive the car. Uh, every now and again, it will be like, hey, try and drift better than this uh, random ghost that's impossible. And you do it, and you don't do it. Uh, but I think in the real game, you'll be racing as real people. I love how they try to, like, with Forza and, and stuff, they, they they try to show them as, like, oh, look! And, like, most people looking at the streams just going, cars. <laughs> driver tars. Come on, cars. get it right. Cars. Driver tar. Uh, but, yeah, I played that. Um, what else did we play on that Thursday? Because I've got it broken down by day. Uh, had a go on Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls, on the, the PS4. Eh... Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like those kind of games, but uh, it's fifty-two quid in the shops. Run about, hit X a bit. Like I like running about, hitting X a bit. Like I really like dig like the the Marvel, the X Men Legends games, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Love oh, those. Ultimate Alliance was awesome. Love those games. This one is supposed to be you know the one that all other you know top-down hack and slash games like that aspire to be, but eh, did nothing for me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely nothing for me. Um, what else did we do on the Thursday? Bought some stuff. Met Sunlight Blade. Right, I think the key, I think the list has run out for <laughs> Tuesday. Thursday. Um, Didn't you go to the zoo? We did that on Saturday. Okay. And we went out with games. Saw, <laughs> yeah, we saw baby meerkats, and we saw we, we saw a bear do a massive pee, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> pee for like a minute straight. Just kept peeing. Oh, and leopard poo. Leopard poo. Uh, there was the big <laughs> bird. <laughs> Do you remember the, the big toucan bird that ate that frog? <laughs> and that monkey that just grabbed a bucket and decided to drag it around the entire area. Yeah, and then got in the bucket. It was yeah. like Donkey Kong. The only thing that I can I can chip in to, to join you in that was uh, a few weeks ago, there was a... Um, uh, I work at retail, and uh, we were packed because uh, it was pissing it down outside, and uh, things get apocalyptic. Uh, when when it's raining, and there was a, a a guy that came in, and he was like, uh, "Are you really busy?" And I was like, "Yeah, you, you know, the, the masses to uh, get apocalyptic when uh, when the skies turn grey." Uh, he was like, "Yeah, we we were going to the zoo, and uh, and we, we when it started raining, we thought we'd come back." And I just went, "Well, nobody likes to see a soggy monkey," and he just went, "Oh, they've all been inside." <laughs> 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 oh man! We saw, oh, we saw monkey bollocks, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, that was yeah, that was I'm something. Down. And do you remember that horse with the long face? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there were so many gags. Oh, we had a lot. Oh my god, <laughs> I like, recorded most of them. It was very funny. Yeah, there there were some cringeworthy gags. But... <laughs> Look forward to that top ten. Oh yeah. my. <laughs> Top ten animal puns. <laughs> Stop lying about. <laughs> <laughs> and coming in at number eight, a leopard taking a shit. And number seven, bear piss. <laughs> Look at that bear piss. 
<laughs> that might actually work. It yeah, work, there we go. Actually. Yeah, uh, we went to the aquarium and we looked at the reptiles and I got scared by the snakes. So yeah, it was a good, it was a good trip. Good trip. Enjoyed yeah. the aquarium. Good trip. It was really good. Oh, um, Patrick, you didn't talk about um, talk, going back to the games. You didn't talk about Sunset Overdrive. Didn't you really like that? That's oh, Friday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Friday. Um, oh right. Sorry. Okay. okay. So Friday. First thing we did Friday is go back to the merch hall and look around there. Uh, I bought some of you on the internet may be familiar with Creepy Woody. Um, I found a Creepy Woody and thought, well, I'm buying that. Um, and I picked it up and I got it to the man and he went, oh, okay. And I went, oh, yes, when you have fun. And I went, oh, I will. And he went, oh, yes, you will. <laughs> that knowing wink, he knew. He knew. Um, so I have the Creepy Woody now. If you don't know what Creepy Woody is, just Google it, but not in public. Um, <laughs> Friday, what did we try? Yeah, we tried but not indie on a porn games. site either. No. <laughs> That's a creepy woody. Um, okay, so Friday, uh, first thing me and Laura did is we went to go try out the indie games. Um, there was the indie mega booth that shows up at PAX and uh, E3 and it now at Gamescom. Um, and we tried a bunch of things, all of which were quite cool. Mm. Uh, first thing we tried was called Typo Man, um, which reminded me a lot of Limbo. Um, basically, you're a dude, but you're made of letters. So you start off as a little circle and you roll along and you sort of find this E, and you kind of bump into it, and that then forms your torso. And then you, you hop about a bit until you find the letter H, which becomes your legs. Uh, and then you can start running, and then you find an R, which drops on the back of you and becomes your big arm. Uh, and if you were paying attention, that spells out hero mm -hmm. to make the main guy up, which is cool. Uh, and there's lots of, like, word puzzles. So, you know, you're running around, and kind of, like, words in the environment are moving around and doing things based on what they are. So you've got... You're running along and there'll be just on the wall the word part. And you think, oh, look, there's the word part. You run towards it and it will flip backwards on itself to the word trap. Which is clever because that's words. And it slams back. And you've then got to go find the letter S, push it along and make the trap land right next to the S. So it becomes the word strap. And then the S wraps around the thing and lets you get past it without getting squished. Uh -huh. Really clever. I really, really like that concept. Really clever. The guy that presented it was a the guy that actually developed it was there as well was showing us how it worked top chap uh, really good looking game uh, called Typo Man mm -hmm. um, trying to get out I think he's trying to get out on PC first and then as many things as he can so mm -hmm. look out for that I liked that was one of, I think that was Laura's favourite thing of the whole show as well so uh, mm -hmm. uh, we also got to try um, Twitter favourite Gang Beasts mm -hmm. which is squishy plasticine men punch each other and throw each other in a hole it made me want to eat Haribo when I saw people right. streaming that it is pretty much that, and it was just big, stupid run around decking each other with really good, weird physics, uh, and trying to push each other off of moving buses and chuck each other into fiery pits. And no idea what I was doing, but it was funny. Uh, proper good party game. Supports up to eight players as well, so like that's always gold. Um, we tried a game called Wander, where you are a tree, um, and it is an MMO. <laughs> but without any combat, and you just slowly walk around solving puzzles as a tree. Mm -hmm. Didn't <laughs> quite get it. Um, yeah, I was reading the little sort of promotional card next to it going, a non-combat MMO, and you're a tree. Huh. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, we then played uh, a Wii U indie title. Is uh, this the one that you told me about, which I then checked out on YouTube yesterday? It looks absolutely shit hot. Yes, Affordable Space Adventures. Yeah, it looks cool. Right, so you are in a ship. It is the shittest ship money can buy. Um, and all, you're going on an adventure in you know, a planet. Uh, and all of the controls are on the Wii U pad. So your engine on button. Uh, there's one for like the density so you can sink in water. Uh, there's lot, you know, power buttons here and there, magnetism things. Uh, the light you can turn on using the Wii U pad as well. It's all done on the screen. So all your controls are down there. And your ship's at the top, so if you you know happen to overheat your ship and turn it off, the whole thing shuts down, and you've got to manually start it up again on the pad again. Mm -hmm. uh, really fun little game. Really, really fun. Really liked it. Um, it looks really atmospheric from the video I've seen as well, because you don't lighting. really see that far ahead of you. It's almost like you, you, the, the ship has got like a little torch on the front of it, and you're exploring, mm. and you don't know yeah. quite how the creatures that you meet are going to react. Exactly, yeah. And it's like, because you are in the shittest ship money can buy, you don't know if you're going to make it through, because the ship's wobbly, and, oh, and there's lasers and all sorts. Um, but that was really, really good. Um, affordable Space Adventures, coming soon to the Wii U. Very cool. Good use the pad really well. The guy that made it was like... Not enough games really use the pads, so we thought we'd try and use it. It's like, yeah, you've done a good job. Hmm. This is what I wanted. 
Um, then I played Pac-Man. There's a okay. retro game section, and they had just all these old consoles hooked up with like Pac-Man and like uh, other old games that I can't remember now, like Space Invaders. Mm-hmm. Um, one had Gianna Sisters on it, I think. The, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like lots, and lots of weird old stuff. Um, <laughs> seeing a bunch of of sort of you know teenagers round a screen trying to work out how to reboot the thing that had crashed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was great. Like C slash Run, is that it? <laughs> Um, but then, yeah, moved down to the Microsoft area uh, and had a go on Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, because I, I, I mean, obviously you, you're a you're a Sony boy through and through, and were mm-hmm. quite upset when Insomniac uh, went off to to different pastures. But I quite a bit, yeah. Recently, I saw it mentioned that uh, Sunset Overdrive was a little bit ratchet and clank, and then I kind of went, ooh. Yeah. Well, before we get into that, before mm-hmm. we even get into the door. Again, we're in the queue, about half an hour queue, really well-organized queue. Uh, got to the front, we're chatting to the uh, the Microsoft person, so at the front, just gassing away, going, oh, where are you from? Oh, we're from England, blah, 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 I want honeymoon, oh, da, da, da. And says, oh, where are you from? Oh, Portsmouth. And then uh, some guys next to us sort of waved over. These guys were actually hired by them uh, to make, like, a, a mural thing on the wall. Okay. Like, that said Sunset City in that kind of, you know, sort of, sort of graffiti-ish, comic-y sort of style. And they were sort of drawing on the wall with pens and painting in orange everywhere. Mm. They sort of leaned over and went, sorry, are you from Portsmouth? And we went, yeah. Went, so are we. It's like, what? It's just, mm. Yeah. And they're like a design company called uh, I Love Dust okay. uh, in the local Portsmouth area. Uh, and had a little bit of a quick chat with them, you know, while we were waiting to go in. And uh, they actually gave us a T-shirt. <laughs> And nobody else, like, these were their T-shirts to, like, use because they were getting dirty. They uh-huh. gave us one of their T-shirts as a honeymoon present. I was like, oh, that's really cool. So, yeah, they're called I Love Dust. They do lots of arty stuff. Um, and it was a really, really cool-looking thing. And, yeah, properly, proper smiles from that. It was great. And then we got to go in and play the game. Motherfucker. Is, is it that good? Because I've, oh. I've heard some disparaging reports from uh, vids that I've, I've watched. But it, oh, fuck I, them. They're wrong. I like how that's kind of <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw every 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 diatribe I was going to add to that. There, fuck them. They're wrong. But they're all wrong. Um, so it looks a bit person... dead rising meets kind of ratchet and clank meets. Sort I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, the mode we played was a multiplayer horde mode uh, with a six so six players and then a dev on the end who's also a player. So there were seven of you. Oh. Um, and you start up and say, okay, right, so enemies are going to come in from the left side over there, so we've got to go over there and not let them in and defend this thing. I'm like, okay, we can do that. And immediately, like, the guns you've got, um, your, your bog-standard machine gun called the AKFU. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, good start. Um, there's one that shoots fireworks. There's one that shoots cold bombs that when you hit a couple of enemies, come, brings a big brrrr above in like ice above their heads for a few seconds uh there's one that shoots teddy bears that run around and blow up um lots of really really cool stupid weird weapons to play with um the screen basically just exploded for 10 minutes straight (laughs) it was glorious like there was just fireworks and explosions and just all sorts of shit cracking off everywhere um really really fun the the traversal stuff was kind of cool didn't really get a chance to try it out much because we were in quite a fixed environment but mm. basically run near a thing hit the x button jump on the thing uh is that a rail grind on it is that a thing jump off of it and fly into the sky like anything you want you can just you know wall jump you can wall run you can keep firing the entire time as well mm. um yeah the ratchet and clank comparisons are very 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 appropriate um big silly guns i say running around with other people with other silly guns mm. right Really fun. And I actually won of all the seven people on our screen because it gives you a little score at the end. And I won. But uh, and asking... then they give you, at the end, they give you a can of the energy drink from the game. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, wow. Delirium Overdrive XT. So we've got <laughs> some of that. <laughs> so have you, you been... It? Yeah, have you drunk it? No, no, we've not drunk it yet. We're, we're saving it for a special occasion. <laughs> so have you been such a Sony boy? Mm. Would it be enough for you to invest in a one? Probably not Ooh. on its own. Probably not on its own because it was fantastic, but I don't think I could drop 300 quid on a game. Yeah. I, I just I don't think I'm in that position. But yeah. that being said, me and Laura discussed on the last day of Gamescom, right, so apart from Bloodborne, if you could buy any one game, what would you get? And I was like, can I buy an Xbox One as well? Wow. Because <laughs> that good, honestly, gurned. And Laura came away for it grinning her head off as well. She said she loved it. She said it felt like it had the same sort of spirit as Time Splitters. 
Ooh. Yeah, big, silly, goofy, not taking itself too seriously, knockabout fun. Now, I know uh, Darren Gargett from Kane and Rents is mm. not only a former Rare employee, mm-hmm. but he's, he's buying an Xbox One Force into Overdrive, so that yeah. will... Uh, That'll put him in raptures, it's I think. Fucking glorious. Uh, I, like, I like the art style. It's so vivid and colourful. Mm. I, I really like that they... Because a lot of games seem to be more drab, kind of... That don't go crazy with their colour palette, necessarily. Yeah. But that yes. game just seems to go it's crazy. The budgets, it's the budgets these days. They can't afford the other colours. <laughs> <laughs> no, th- brown it, yeah, just brown. I think it's what I, I, I always refer to as Nolanitis. It's that Christopher Nolan... Let's apply grey, black, and brown, and just drain every single colour out of the script and out of the humour and out of the emotion. And there was a, is it um, Josh Whedon has that quote where he says it's um, make it dark, make it brooding, make it black, but then for God's sake, tell a joke. <laughs> and I, I really like that. But yeah, the palette looks awesome, and I love the way that you could, uh, from the the videos that I'd seen, that you could kill something and it would go pop. But yeah. actually, say pop. On it, it, it does. It really does. It's it's a joy to play. Really fun. Um, and yeah, one of, one of the highlights of the show, definitely. Um, but then we got to go to the indie section, uh, the Microsoft indie bit, um, okay. the ID at Xbox. The queue for this was two people long. What? We got, we got in in one minute. That's crazy. But more people should have been there. Like you look at the queues for like for the COD bit. And, like, they separated the queue out into two separate bits. It was ridiculous. <laughs> this bit had a queue of two people. We weren't sure if it was the queue. And they were, oh, in you go. Like, oh, okay. That's hey. insane. Um, yeah, and there was some really, really good stuff in there. Did you see Cuphead? Because that looks gorgeous. Didn't it looks see very Cuphead in there. I looked for it. I old didn't... school Mickey Mouse. Yeah, if it was there, I must not have seen it. But we, we tried a few things. Uh, we tried a game called Never Alone. Uh, okay. I think it's called Never Alone. Uh, that's been made by Inuits. Mm. Um, and they, uh, the guy that was sh- showing it to us, it was explaining that it's made by. Uh, they wanted to reach out, you know, to the wider world because you know they're quite a secular, you know, their own society. And they wanted to reach out, and they thought a game would be a good way of doing it. Um, so you play a little uh, Inuit kid in a, in a big fluffy coat, and you've got a little fox companion, and you can play co-op. Mm. So I took I took the kid, and Laura took the fox, and you've got to sort of move through these kind of rickety sort of, you know, I, I don't want to say the word Eskimo, <laughs> but for want of a better word, sort of inuit Eskimo sort of landscapes. I've just brought up some screens. It looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wind effects really good. Like the wind blows you about and there's snow floods the screen, you know, and you can actually hear them speaking in Inuit in the background as well. Uh, uh-huh. A few control issues um, because it is still quite early on and there are some Unity issues. The guy said, yeah, the jumps are a little bit Unity problem at the moment, but they're, they're working on that. Uh, but generally, really, really good looking game. Again, channeled Limbo a bit in the way, you know, it's a you know kid running around jumping over stuff that's going to kill him. Um, really, really good. Uh, really, really cool game. Um, moving on from that, uh, we played a game called Night Squad, um, which was, again, surprisingly good. Mm. Um, okay, Xbox Live game. Uh, it looks like an Xbox Live indie game. Uh, top down, uh, 2D. You are a knight. It supports up to eight players. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different modes, and it's, it's a, bu- a one-button game. Run with the stick, stab with the A button. That's it. <laughs> Is this going to uh, sort of play into uh, the same, I don't know, the same sort of uh, fanaticism that, uh, that keeps you returning to Towerfall? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. It's exactly that. You run around uh, with just, like, it was me, Laura, and five strangers. It's like, right, there's a chalice in the middle. Get it and bring it back to your base. Mm-hmm. It was bonkers. Just, like, all these different guys running in, just jabbing each other. And it's one-hit kill as well. So, like, you're dying left, right, and center. Uh, and there's just this whole manic energy to it. And the guy that was demoing it as one of the devs was really getting excited about it and like really enjoying watching us play as well. Uh, really fun game. Uh, it's probably not going to be expensive. Uh, and it supports up to eight players, and it's going to be the best with that. So you get it, you fools, when it comes out. Night Squad. I'm looking at some of these uh, some of these pictures in the middle. It says, like, Grail Captured. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much that. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and then the last indie game uh, to mention is Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. This rings a bell. Yeah, basically, you're in a circular ship. Again, 2D. You're in a circular ship, uh, and it's got about five or six different stations inside the ship. And there's two of you running around, and you each have to control... Like, you can only control one thing at a time. So there's one that steers the ship. There's one that does the shield. There's one that does the top gun, one that does the bottom gun, one that does the tractor beam. Uh, And you have to fly around rescuing bunnies in space. Don't ask. There's bunnies. Rescue them. uh, Whatever. 
Um, but you have to kind of cont- like you know work together. Say right now, you get the engine. Now I'm going to go over here and do this. But oh no, there's bad guys. Right, I'm going to get off the engine and shoot that guy. But you need to get on the shield. And and it, we kind of failed because it was quite loud and we couldn't really hear each other. But I think as a two-player co-op game, it's got legs. It's certainly got a look to it with the, mm. the, the the screens that I've brought up now. Got a lot of legs. Looking really, 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 really fun. And like we enjoyed it, but we, we want to be able to talk to each other. I think you need to communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, if any of you listening have played uh, the classic uh, five-player board game, Space Alert, uh, where you're five idiots running around trying to keep a ship from exploding, it's basically like that, but a video game. Cool. Uh, really, really fun. Um, what else did we play that day? Oh, yeah, two more notable ones. Uh, the Crew, which was a two-hour line for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I enjoyed it. Fun demo. Played a bit like Burnout Paradise. Drivey, okay. drivey, drivey, skiddy, skiddy. Um, lots of little missions with your little crew. Like, oh, yeah, the four of you take out this guy, and then they had one where you had to race against each other as well. Good fun. The car mechanics were good. Uh, felt felt good. Uh, the cars drove well. Um, the customization, fantastic. All real time, so you're swapping out hoods and wheels and stuff in real time. Uh, looked really, really good. Um, generally, just generally fun time. Really good game. I enjoyed it. Mm. Is that only? Is that multiplayer only? That game? I believe so. In the same way that like uh, Need for Speed Rivals is. I think okay. that it's better when it's online. I think you probably yeah. could play it offline, but I don't see why you would. Yeah, that. Yeah. That- that looks interesting. Yeah, I, think I, it's I player, enjoyed but... it. Yeah, but let's say we, we braved the queue. I think on the Friday, it was like ah, Scott, we've got we've got time for one more queue. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, but then on the way out, uh, we then tried Lords of the Fallen. Really? Now, Lords of the Fallen, for those of you not keeping up, is the sort of Western-inspired uh, sort of cover cover song of Dark Souls made by Deep Silver, mm. uh, guys who now own Saints Row and Metro and a whole bunch of other games. Um, now, it was billed as like, it's going to be like Dark Souls. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to really pay attention. You know, you've got bars to manage and stuff. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. No. It's not challenging. It's bullshit. Really? It's Ooh. broken. Like, me and Laura both played it for a while. I died about three times. She died about seven times. And... Mm. That's with, you know, my soul's head on of keep up your shield. Same controls, you know, hold your shield, walk forward, wait for the attack, counter attack. The enemy's health bars were ridiculous. Like, you think, right, block, 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 block. Okay, and stab, 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 stab. And it's just like a bog standard enemy. And he's like a third of his health. You're like, what? Well, I saw, I saw, and because uh, after you told that to me, I was quite surprised, but I hadn't mm. necessarily heard much about it before. So I saw a few interviews, and the guy, I think the guy who's made it or working on it or something like that, said that um, every single enemy, it, it's it's all about one-on-one fights. So you're progressing through the level, and you'll see a single enemy by itself. And every single enemy encounter is supposed to be like a really challenging boss fight kind of thing, which to me isn't. It doesn't sound that much like Dark Souls at all, to be honest. Because no. um, it, it's it just kind of like they, they got the idea of it. Like the, the best, the best way I can see of it is a uh, to put it to describe it plainly. It's a mix between Dark Souls and Dark Siders, but with none of the bits that are good about them. Ooh, like, box quote. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> like the the art style, like it's quite you know granular, and you can't really see what your guy looks like, and the controls, like they don't explain the controls. There's a bit of paper next to you <laughs> with all of the controls listed out. There were like forty lines on that thing. They're like, okay, if I've got my weapon in two hands, I can do that. Okay, but where's the button for doing it in two? I can't... Oh, fuck, I'm just going to keep playing. Um, really, like, annoying control system. Like, I found the boss as well, and the boss was just dull. Like, there's no art to it at all. Um, you're just waiting for him to do his big move and stabbing him in the butt. And I know that's kind of what you do in the Souls games, but it didn't have that feel to it. You just felt like you were waiting for him to open up and then attack him. Like, it was just bad. Like, it's all the... Tried to do all the decisions that Dark Souls makes, but in a really rubbish knockoff way. Uh, in the same way that I didn't like Bound by Flame that came out a while ago. It was just a shit action game. And this is a shit Dark Souls game. <laughs> shit. It, hated it. It, hated it, it, it. Adds, it adds to it that there's no real character creator in there, that you, no. you, you're sort of tied to playing chunky, goatee McBall. Grumpy McTattoo face. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they sort of build it up as this big sort of epic story, and it's like, I don't really see how you're getting that out of this guy that just sort of shuffles around with his big shield and doesn't really do much. I, I hated it. Absolutely hated it. 
Uh, Laura hated it as well. She was close to walking away from it, like and just going and waiting outside rather than playing it more, which says all you need to say, really. I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, then oh, carry on. No, I, I was just gonna say I much prefer when you can c- create and customize your character because then you feel more a part of the world that you're in because mm. th- there's yeah you feel more involved with what's going on on around you because you've mm. designed the character yourself. When you have like a pre- did, did you say it was like a pre-made character? Yeah, you get, like you all use the same guy, and I think there's a few different weapons you can use, but they're all variations on sword. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I prefer to have freedom over that, to be honest, over how I look and things. Mm, but yeah, it was. I just didn't didn't like it. Did not like it at all. Um, but yeah, that was disappointing. So I was hoping that would be good, and it really, really left a bad taste. Um, but all that was left then, uh, after that, I'm, I'm nearly done because this is Sunday. Uh, went to have a look at the Evil Within queue. Uh, mm. Nope. Uh, went to look at the Evolve queue. Nope. Uh, went and watched the Metal Gear Phantom Pain video, mm-hmm. uh, which was about a half an hour wait for about a 10, 15 minute video. Worth it. Yeah. Uh, I got myself a sweet eye patch out of it, <laughs> which is now adorning my own six foot tall solid snake statue. Uh, <laughs> it, it's official now. It totally counts. He, um, he does actually have one. That's not a euphemism for his penis. <laughs> yeah, I really have one. <laughs> I would, I would love it if you did refer to your penis as your six foot solid snake statue. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that you've then got, uh, gone and committed to just one woman is quite magnanimous of you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? Uh, yeah, we saw the Metal Gear video. And in that video, I learned that you can make a horse do a poopy on a road. And then a car will drive over the poopy and slide. <laughs> It's not the one where you've got the box and it looks like these, there's a bunch of roses on it and then you expand <laughs> the box and it's like a, a woman in a bikini holding yeah. a bunch of roses or something. Yeah, uh, but they, they showed off a lot of the weird stuff you can do with it. Like they tried different tactics. Um, they showed off a lot of the Fulton mechanic. And what the Fulton is, is a little balloon that you tie to uh, bad guys or you know, things that you find that you want. Uh, and they take them back to your base so you can kind of, you know, take back dudes or you can, you know, find equipment like, you know, jeeps and stuff. Uh, or sheep, you can find sheep and attach balloons to them and they fly off with a little <laughs> which is fun, uh, but a very creative use at the end, uh, there was a, a jeep and there was a helicopter coming to get Snake and it's like, shit, what do I do, what do I do so right, we can use this jeep to get away but not in the way you'd think so he runs over, attaches a C4 to the jeep, then attaches the Fulton balloon Guess runs away done. turns it around, the, the, the jeep goes up in the air hits the helicopter and just decimates it, bursts it, to which the entire uh, sort of 30 odd people in the room started laughing and clapping. Mm-hmm. It was glorious. It was so good. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it sold it to me. It, it's a really good looking thing. Like, there's lots of options you can do. And any game where I can steal a sheep with a balloon, yeah, sold. Um, surely, the, surely the Kojima moment of Gamescom, though, was the, the PT demo, which just send people into raptures right i've still not played it we've downloaded it we've not got to it yet but oh, was that that seen... horror thing yeah it's yeah, it's... to explode isn't it oh, yeah, yeah. i don't know what it is though but i've seen loads of people talking about it yeah basically they, they, they teaser yeah they 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 announced that there was going to be this thing instantly on um on psn to download that was a first person uh survival horror that was a um and at the end of it you the thing that was unlocked was the trailer for the new Silent Hill, which is okay. Kojima, Guillermo del Toro, and Norman Reedus from Walking Dead. Mm. Um, but those are all the, things I like. But the the actual uh, demo itself is moving through these rooms in a house and then coming to the end and then starting these rooms again. But things change, and some of the footage I've seen from it is genuinely unsettling. Um, and it apparently does survival horror incredibly well, but I know a lot of people that have just said that it's genuinely terrified them. Good. And footage, footage that I've seen, like there was one bit in particular where you try this door and you push on the door and there's a white light and you think it's a ghost. And when you actually open the door, it's a torch that's on the floor. You pick up the torch, the door locks behind you, this crying in this bathroom that you then can't get out of. And you look around the bathroom, this darkened bathroom with the torch, and in the sink, there's a fetus that's crying. Oh. And then behind oh. you, somebody starts trying the door. 
<laughs> and moving the handle and then kicking the door, trying to open it. All the time, there's darkness, there's this tiny room, there's this bloodied fetus crying in the, in the, in the sink. Apparently, it's a world of disturbing. But as, as horrors go, um, wow. it's supposed to be really unsettling, but also, you know, possibly the best reveal of a game ever, rather than uh, just some CGI trailer announcing it. It's like, mm. yeah, here's proof of concept. This is because Silent Hills may well be you know, uh, your normal third-person view and all this sort of stuff. Mm. But if they're establishing tone and giving somebody something that they can lose themselves in to, uh, to you know, get straight into what that tone would be, mm. mission accomplished. That's classy as anything. Yeah. yeah uh, spe- well. spe- speaking of tone as well, speaking of tone, Laura got to try uh, the new Alien game. Oh, right, okay. Isolation, which is uh, you and an alien. Mm. Um she came away from it uh, saying, I don't like it. <laughs> and the desi- one of the designer guys was there. was like, oh, you didn't like it? Was, no, no, I liked it, but I don't like it. <laughs> uh, so you can hear the alien running behind you as you're running away. And yeah, she came up saying, really, really good. She's like, you go play it, go play it, go play it. But I didn't quite get a chance to play it before they kicked us out of the Sony van. Um, but yeah, from all, of, from all she said, it sounds really, really good. Scary. I saw so, some footage, so what but... is it? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's like, it's, it plays like the first Alien film, where it's I think it's Ripley's daughter, and okay. she's exploring like a spaceship, and there is just a single alien on it. Oh, I see. Right, okay. Mm. Oh, like, the, like the nemesis from Resi 3. Right. Yeah, there was some footage that I saw with someone that was that was creeping around this uh, this certain area, and it's, you know, all the effects are very much like the first Alien, where you walk into a corridor, and lights slowly come on as they blink further and further down the corridor. And there was one person that was sort of creeping around and they just, this shadow emerged on the floor before them and they, they looked around and the alien was curling itself down from the ceiling tiles. <laughs> and I watched this footage and just went, nope, 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 nope. Okay, done. <laughs> and they were saying that, uh, I saw an interview with uh, one of the designers as to why he thought the PS4 version was the best version. And the the light that's on the front of the DualShock 4 mm. apparently blinks in time with the scanner nice. that's on the screen. And if mm. there's something there, it will sort of light up the room or, you know, blink more intermittently than uh, than it otherwise would, which is it's quite, a, quite a degree of immersion, I Trevor. reckon. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was everything I played at Gamescom. <laughs> I think we've we've covered all bases. We've covered so much ground today. Yes, I uh, really appreciate you joining us. Some light bleed. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, well, it's really awesome to be here. This is a load of fun. Yeah, yeah, cool. It's nice to nice to have a natter about souls and beyond, and, uh, and yeah. you know, thank and you. The real world it. beyond that. Yep. Yes, even and a game to come wrap up. <laughs> Can I say yeah. what a pleasure it was just to hang out as well, like just have a bro to just take her out places. I mean, we went for dinner like what two, three times, didn't we? Over the yeah, course of the no. week. I really, really appreciated that. It just, it really made the trip a lot better because I reckon there's a lot of things that you showed me that I wouldn't have done otherwise and mm. I probably would have starved to death if you hadn't taken me out to dinner every night, so. <laughs> <laughs> showed you where the supermarket was. Oh, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a lifesaver. With yeah, the weird no. German food. It was great. Yeah, well, I have, uh, I, I, did, I did notice that you put up a picture of your sausage on Twitter uh, and I'm adding no context to that. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, you, if you like Sunlight Blades, uh, if you're listening and, and you want to check out Sunlight Blade and you haven't already, what's wrong oh, yeah, with you, yeah. um, you can find him on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash sunlightblade. All one word, isn't it? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Or just, just search for Sunlight Blade. You'll find it. <laughs> it's big shot YouTube money now. You'll find him. <laughs> <laughs> um, for for me and CJ, uh, thank you. Thank you for, for coming on our show. We've loved having you on. Uh, well, you know, I have. CJ? Yeah, I've... Absolutely, yeah, yeah, of <laughs> okay. course. Just checking. I've made it on a podcast, all right? And Mum, I'm famous now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, obviously, you know, go watch his videos. Um, thank you for bearing with us in these last couple of months while the, the, the podcast has been a bit slow. Um, but I, I am married now. That's out of the way. Uh, we're over the hump. So we can get back to recording like we're supposed to. Yes. I think this is going to be. My wife has thrown a cushion at me. (laughs) Uh, We can come back to regular shows again. Back to regular shows. Um, We've got all sorts of.
plans coming, all sorts of plans. I've got pages and pages of notes, and we'll be <laughs> discussing them all with you all soon. But big things are coming. Yeah. What were you, what were you saying, Nassobi? I was just going to say that this is going to be a massive chunk of content. It probably should make up for it because we've covered so much today. This is going to be really... Lo- is this like a two-hour one, was it, or something? I think we're at two hours now. Yeah, so a long bus journey is what you need. Yeah, I think we'll, I, I think it might be an idea to uh, uh, to cut this with the Dark Souls stuff and then maybe put the Gamescom stuff after the end. We'll see how it goes. That might be a move. But we'll yeah, see, yeah. 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 Feel, feel it out, bro. <laughs> what requires least editing? I'll do that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Effort. <laughs> I have it. Uh, but yeah, I think I think we're done, aren't we? So you know, do you always you know like and share and follow and all that stuff? Uh, we appreciate every one of you, uh, and uh, I guess we'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah. Cheer about. Bye. Bye. Also bye. Bye, first time.